We are now past the halfway point of Six Masters 2020. Hello and welcome to Playday number nine. It's Guz and Raven bringing you all of tonight's action. Raven, how's things? Good, man. I am super excited for tonight. There's a, a couple of big matches and a lot on the line, as you said, we're past the halfway mark now. So these matches are really gonna be important for the standings. Well, of course, make sure you guys at home stay up to date with everything Six Masters related at Rainbow Six ANZ on your favorite social medias. And of course, on Twitter, you can jump onto the community polls. And Raven, if the polls have taught us anything, it's that none of these matches are set in stone. There have been plenty of results that have not been black and white. Yeah, it's been really tough. We've seen lots of 1-1 one -one series, and it's not just a matter of teams winning their own maps. It's actually been quite a lot of teams winning their opponents' maps. In fact, a majority of the matches have actually gone that way. So it's really tough. It's hard to call. So yeah, good luck with your predictions. Well, of course, those close matches are made for very close standings. Let's have a look at how everyone sits heading into tonight. And man, oh man, Raven, that <laughs> mid-table battle is fierce at the moment. It really is. First place to sixth place. They're all so close to each other. Wildcard do have a bit of breathing room, though, at the front there. But really, for top four for playoffs, it is so heavily contended. Even Ferox down in seventh, they're only one game behind that chunk leading into fourth. So it really is going to be pretty much anyone's game, besides poor little Kanga down there at the bottom. <laughs> I know, poor Kanga. It's, yeah, they've had such a rough season. But hey, they're still trying to fight for at least one win in this season so not, not all yep. hope is lost they, ha they still have time <laughs> yes they do still have time uh there is a chance and that's a big thing for these other teams because they are really all in it with a chance for playoffs kanga could pull an upset that could end a playoff run for any one of these teams yeah that's what makes it so interesting despite these matches maybe going into them looking a little bit easy for these teams i don't think that alleviates much pressure because there might even be a little bit more i mean if you're going against kanga late in the season if you lose those critical points, you could be done for. So that's going to be in the back of these players' minds. And I mean, yeah, you don't want to be slipping up against a team that hasn't won a map yet. That would uh, not go down well. No, and there's such thing as complacency as well. Uh, you could be one of these contending teams and you might just feel a little too comfortable leading into that game. And sometimes that's all it takes. Kanga not feeling the pressure that could surprise you and it will really come back to bite you hard. <laughs> I mean, one of those teams that can't be complacent tonight is Team Sinister. They'll be taking on Kanga first, and despite them being in some pretty good form, um, continuing that on from the last season of Pro League, they're coming into tonight having to basically take six points. If they don't, that could be a massive blockage on them making those standings as we have a look at the schedule for tonight. Yeah, Sinister do have a little bit of pressure on them. I mean, 
you could say they should be comfortable, right? This should be the easiest match of their season. But at the same time, like we've been saying, it might not be. I mean, Kanga could come out with a massive surprise. They might choose a map that seems to have not prepared for that Kanga have hard worked on over the past week. And that could mean big things when it comes to these final couple of weeks. And then, of course, later in the night, we will have Elevate taking on the Pittsburgh Knights. A match that on paper is probably looking a little bit closer. And again, these teams are fighting for those top four positions, trying to cement themselves. And again, if they lose critical points here tonight, that'll have a massive impact on how the rest of their season plays out. Elevate in particular, they're in touch with that top two, top three section at the moment, but it's still close within fourth place. And they're going to have to be a little bit careful with the matchup against Knights. They're also vying for top four. They've been going 1-1 for the past couple of weeks. That's Elevate. So they, yeah, they need to be really careful and they need to secure some 2-0s. All right, well, let's start talking about the matchup tonight. It is Sinistar taking on Kanga. Let's bring up that Sinister lineup and see who they'll be bringing to the table tonight. Becoming a pretty familiar lineup, of course. Luna not in. Derpe is taking her position at the moment. But Raven, this team starting to really develop some nice synergy and um, it's been a pretty decent season for them thus far. It really has. They've had some fantastic performances. They didn't manage to get a map off wildcard, but both of those were close. They've also taken maps off the likes of Elevate and Okami, the two teams that are ahead of them in the top four there. So keep an eye out. Vincia also managed to get the Snowball Esports MVP of last week. So they really are starting to steam forward into that top four position. Well, Kanga, they're yet to win a map this season. Let's see who they're bringing to the table tonight. And Raven, there has been a roster change. There has been a roster change. So as we heard on broadcast last week, Wayne Man has decided to retire or step away from Rainbow Six slash this team. And that means they're bringing in a new player there. And I'm going to apologize if I pronounce this wrong, but I believe it's pronounced Nove or Noveix. But that's going to bring some freshness to this lineup and it could help them out. It might be all the difference they need. Sometimes it does just take that fresh inclusion of a single player and things might be dramatically improved. Yeah, it could also be the case of a bit of short-term pain for long-term gain. They might struggle even more tonight, but then find that success later on. I mean, we have seen that um, with other teams. They bring someone on, it makes things a little bit tricky in the short term, but then they thrive long term. So it's been really interesting, I think, to track how that goes, track how Novax plays this evening. Hopefully, he has a good one, can try to lift <laughs> his team's spirits. Because, I mean, even Spruce, the man who brings all the energy for that team, we've seen him in the interviews. He's been pretty down, so... I'm really hoping that they can try and muster some confidence and uh, get, get a result on the board tonight. Yeah, and they've already heavily acknowledged the fact that this season is really a, a big rebuild phase for them. They didn't have time at the end of Pro League coming into Six Masters to work on that rebuild after they lost a couple of key players. So it's just whatever they can get to work is going to be great for them. And there's some danger behind that as well. Playing that loose, somewhat unpredictable play style can work really well against some teams. Well, the map veto plays a massive part in how every matchup plays out. Of course, we are playing a best of two, which means each team gets one ban and one pick. Let's bring up the bans first and see where we will not be heading in this series. Clubhouse taken out by Kanga and Consulate by Sinister. And I'm pretty sure that's what we kind of expected, isn't it? Yeah, great bans from both teams. I mean, Sinister, they seem to not like Consulate. They haven't played Consulate yet this season. So I think that's just generally their Insta ban and Kanga taking out Clubhouse. I mean, they haven't had great performances on it, and also it's one of Sinister's biggest comforts, so you don't want them to be going to that. All right, well, let's see where we will be heading. One pick for each team, as I mentioned earlier. Cafe for Team Sinister, and then Theme Park theme for park. Kanga. <laughs> nice. I'm excited for Theme Park. I, I just want to see more and more Theme Park, so I'm glad to see it picked. Kanga did choose it last week against Wildcard, and they got 7 0 so that's, uh, that was a bit rough. But, I mean, that was against Wildcard, right? Top of the table, strong team. Uh, they beat Sinister on it earlier in the season. In fact, that was week one. Sinister lost 5-7 on Theme Park. So maybe that's something that Kanga see as something they can capitalize on. Not too sure there. And I'm not sure if... I really hope my results are right here, but from what I've got, Sinister playing Cafe, they played it against Akami and Elevate, and they lost it both times. Did I put that in right? So that's yes, yeah. pretty strange of them to be going there, don't you think? Uh, yeah, both 5-7 losses. I'd say that maybe based on the fact that they have been losing Cafe, maybe they've wanted to work on it a lot more and fix it so that it can be back into their map pool as a viable option. And also, they've seen Kanga lose it quite a bit this season. Kanga have had some shaky performances. Their best one was against Okami. They lost 6-8, so it was a bit closer. 
But other than that, there's a lot of cafe vods for Kanga, so that could be what Sinister is really steering into. I think what's funny about that Okami game <laughs> against Kanga was the fact that Okami actually won the very first three rounds of that map flawlessly. Mm -hmm. So they didn't lose a man for the first three rounds. <laughs> but they did bounce back, you know, and always start and managed to take it in the end. So it's going to be up, I think, to Sinister to try and be strong at the start there and not be complacent like Akami may have been during that map when they got that uh, early head start. Yeah, and another part of that as well is the fact that there are so many VODs for Kanga on Cafe. Being a rebuilding team, they're not going to have much depth in their map pool, which is something we've talked about before, but likewise with strategies. So they're not going to be able to change a whole lot in a short period of time. That does give them some kind of predictability, but I also think they're probably going to play quite strange playstyles for the rest of the season. Well, it's time for the poll. Let's see what you guys at home think. Who do you reckon is going to take this one? Uh, Sinister. 80%. <laughs> That's, yeah, pretty one-sided. Unfortunately, Kanga just not really bringing much to the table heading into this one, unfortunately. Yeah, and I mean, it's hard to look at that poll any other way. It's hard to look at the game any other way. Sinister are looking really great. Kanga are just not. So if you've been watching Six Masters, I think it should be pretty obvious how to feel about this game going into it. But it doesn't change the fact that Kanga still have that chance of making a surprise you know like the underdog story they might just all of a sudden bring it one week and you don't want to be the team that they bring it against yeah and i think it's easy to maybe look at this match and look at this lineup and think it's gonna be a bit of a boring one-sided game but for me the most interesting part about this is that kanga do have that roster change and seeing maybe how that has altered their play style will it be for better will it be for worse i guess this matchup um will give us an indication of maybe they'll be able to find an upwards trajectory for the rest of the season yeah, and that's the thing. They've done a roster change now. So maybe this Kanga isn't what we've seen already for this season. Uh, it could be the key. It might not be. And we're going to get to find that out tonight. So it is going to be an exciting series against Sinistar. On top of that, Sinister do have that pressure of showing up and ensuring that they get both map wins tonight because they would be backing themselves to get the full points to give themselves a great chance to finish in playoff contention. Well, you mentioned earlier in the lineups that Vinny um, or Vinciri won the MVP for Snowball Esports in the last week. Who are you keeping an eye on heading into this one? Is it still Vinny or are there some other players that you're expecting to maybe step up? I mean, that's the great thing about Sinister this season is it's not just been one player that has been fantastic for them. Almost all of them have stepped up individually in certain plays or on certain maps. Nico has, Derpe has, Milo has, Fisher has, like all of them are capable of doing so. So it's really hard to pinpoint which one you would say keep your eye on. It's just all of them. And then even their team plays have just really leveled up in Six Masters. And then, I mean, when you flip the coin and look at Kanga, they have players that at times can sort of step up. I know if, um, recently mm -hmm. Spruce, for example, has been playing like some crazy entries on Ash um, and he brings that experience to the team. Who needs to step up for them? Because it feels like even when someone does, maybe it's not having a big impact on sort of how the rest of the team is playing as well. Yeah, well, they seem to be struggling a lot with just their general team play. They just lack that deep coordination, a lot of synergy. So in terms of who's stepping up, it needs to be all of them to an extent. Um, but they've had some highlight players, you said Spruce, but also Campo and Leb have had some pretty good matches as well. Leb's probably been their most consistent, I'd say, where he's had some pretty big clutch situations, top fragging on a couple of maps. Uh, I think he's probably, for me, their most consistent player. Yeah, well, let's start talking about the maps. Of course, we know that Cafe will be the first one in this series. It's a map that we've established both teams don't have the best form on. So how do you think that's going to play out here? How's that going to translate? Um, to tonight. We've seen quite a bit of cafe um, across ANZ so far. What are some things that we need to keep an eye out for? I think we need to keep an eye out for how Kanga's playing it because like we've said before, they've had a few VODs on it this season. I think Sinister are playing into that, looking to read how they play it and just straight hard count on it so that it's a, a straightforward match. Uh, if I was Kanga, especially with the new roster change, I'd be playing completely different, almost a really loose play style. You do see some teams just favor you know what guys, like let's just throw our strats to the wind. We'll play loose, play on instinct, and that can make it hard for a team that is relying on structure and relying on counter stratting. If a team isn't able to adapt to that quick enough, then that could spell the doom for the map. I think it's interesting that you mentioned that because Sinistar watching them and talking to some of their players, they do seem like quite a structured team and like counter, um, counter voting and uh, really looking into the, their opponents. And as you mentioned, if Kanga just decide to throw it out the window, that might throw them off a little bit and really force them to adapt quite quickly, which could be a struggle. Yep, it can. And so they have to be on their toes and they have to be ready to adapt really quickly. <laughs>
Well, we're ready. Let's see if the teams are ready. It's Sinister taking on Kangar Cafe is the map. Let's jump straight into the action. Quite excited for this one as we enter the ban phase. What sort of bans are we expecting here, Sir Raven? We've seen a few different trends. Thatcher and Ying are probably the, the most prominent ones. Habana is also a great ban on Cafe because as Hard Breacher, there are certain walls that you want to open and they can be a little unsafe doing so up close and personal with operators like Thermite and Maverick. So getting that Habana off the board means that as a defender, you can create little traps around those critical walls if the attackers are trying to open them. Thatcher banned out there by Team Sinister. A ban that's had its ebbs and flows so far this season. And Mirror will follow shortly. Mirror definitely a strong ban also on Cafe, denying direct intel that you get from that mirror quite safely as well. I mean, the most famous and common one that people would play is the one through back door in towards piano, opening up that soft wall in towards piano. You get really big line of sight there and it's huge communication that you can give to your team. So definitely getting rid of that. And more intel denial coming out here from the Maestro. It's gonna make it a little bit tougher on that defense, which is usually a comfort. Probably expecting a lot more Valkyrie and Pulse probably to come out on these defense halves. Alrighty, nothing too crazy in the band phase there. Interested to see where Kanga will elect to go for their first defense. It appears as if it will be Kitchen. Not upstairs just yet. Again, Kanga probably trying to throw off their opponent a little bit here. It'll be very interesting, I think, to see how this one plays out. For me, I feel as if the first couple of rounds here are pretty much going to dictate the game. If Kanga let it slip early, Sinister should be able to just get this one under the <laughs> under the carpet put it under the carpet it never happened easy easy three points but you never know they almost saw kanga bring it back against the kami last time defenders protect your bombs can't uh, quite put across to them just yet yeah i mean that's got to say something too right that's not all just a kami maybe having struggles that's kanga being able to put some things together and make it work so they've got it in them, and on this map, and you touched on that as well, you said you thought it was maybe a bit risky that Sinistar chose this as their map pick, and that's where the danger might be. Kanga might be ready to play somewhat consistently on Cafe, and that could be a, a big issue for Sinistar. Of course, keep in mind, Kanga are defending below here despite having some presence above, or at least some utility placed. We have seen some teams trying to quite an aggressive hold from above. It doesn't appear as if Kanga will do that. Instead, trying to spread out more so horizontally. Often the more favored approach. Lab on that Kanga, on, on that Kanga, on that Mozzie rather, <laughs> trying to uh, find some drones as I find my words. Takes takes a couple of rounds to warm up, I swear. <laughs> Playing all casting. <laughs> I could picture Mozzie riding a kangaroo, you know, so I mean, it kind of makes yep, sense. True, <laughs> true. Don't leak the new ability, Raven. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Vehicle's incoming, mate. <laughs> Loses the super uh, sure he gets a kanga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sounds pretty good. Sinister are going to go for this top down clear, which I think a lot of teams have decided to do on Kitchen, but it seems to be a detriment because it takes a lot of time to clear all those floors to get down to the first floor which usually leaves teams maybe 45 seconds to try and get freezer wall open or actually get around site and get some good positioning to try and get an execute. It really comes down to key time management and that's where Sinister is going to have to be accurate on this round. Can I just say, I am so happy to see Fisher guy playing on Zofia, not some crazy <laughs> Monty or Finca. Feels like he's often just been thrown onto that... To, Wildcard operator, excuse the terrible use of word there. Of course, Wildcard <laughs> is another team, but looks like Fisher Guy is on that comfort pick. Hopefully, you can find some frags here. It's definitely one of the stronger fraggers on this team, so someone to keep an eye out on for sure. Yeah, definitely. He has been playing some pretty strange operators, and sometimes you just got a favor maybe giving those that can gun an actual gun to shoot people with. I think whether it pays off for Sinister in this instance. Nico's going to put a lot of pressure on the side here with the Sledge opening these holes. The C4 not hitting the mark either. So that's some wasted utility there from Kanga. And this is looking pretty good from Sinister now. They're getting Freezer Hatch open. It's not going to be able to be impact trick by any means. 
And that means there's a lot of pressure on side as Nico just misses that player crossing. Leaving it up to the final 50 seconds. Still five versus five though, guys. This could be a real banger of a final section to this round. Fisher guy just whiffs a couple of shots there. Spruce, the only member from Kanga, or the only member rather in the server that has been lit up. Final drains go out to try and locate these players as soon as they prepare for the execute. Freeze wall has been open. It looks like it will be where they head this attack from, but the nade will be shut down. That's Derpe taken out. Novax with his first kill in six masters will eventually be downed. It's now a four on four effectively. Make that a three on five as Leb gets Vinny and Sinister just really struggling to convert any sort of control. They do eventually make their way in. Moloska with that diffuser in hand, but there we go. Two more shut, two more players shut down, and now Nico is forced to salvage the round. He doesn't have time as he gets lit up by that smoke. Makes his way over towards the freezer window. There's nothing he can do. He can just stand there and wait for the time to deplete. Kanga with a strong first round. There we go, Kanga on the board. That's uh, more than their first map from last week, so that's a, a good start there, guys. <laughs> and yep. look, I've got to say, their defense was great because they didn't try and overextend. They didn't play into the sinister room clear. They just stayed nice and patient, disciplined on site, which is the strength of the way sinister, or the weakness, sorry, of the way sinister attacked because they didn't have much time. They still didn't have that much map control. They had some angles from above, but that was it. I think the concerning thing for Sinister was that they had a lot of time to displace those defenders from above, maybe try and find a pick or two, and players such as Nico, for example, finding it really challenging to inflict much damage or put much pressure on those Kanga players who literally just stood there and waited for them to all filter through for Isla. Wasn't the most challenging defense by any stretch. It's just nice and simple, and Sinister seemingly played straight into their hands. Of course, this objective will play out a little bit differently. Both things will have to adapt. Uh, I really like from Kanga that they just didn't try... Because when you're in a situation like Kanga, right, where they haven't got a map win in six Masters, sometimes you maybe... You could say you try too hard. You try and do something a bit special, a bit cute, a bit strange, and that usually just makes things worse. Uh, and you described it perfectly with that defense. They kept it simple. They just didn't really move more than they needed to. And that is just what works when you're trying to hold the, that, that site that way. And Sinister just failed to displace them with that vertical control. They did have Nico on that sledge opening the floor, but he never found any picks from it. And it never really had a massive impact on Kanga. Kanga with a little bit of a roam at the moment. Both Spruce and Leb are playing off site. Couple of shots raining out, but not doing any damage. Vinny's actually below as well. Could find himself in an engagement very shortly here with Leb. He hits the shot. That's Leb taken down. Bit of an ill-advised roam there from the Jaeger. And now Sinister will have that man advantage pretty early into the second round. From memory too, I feel like this is a great counter strat and a great read from Sinister because I've seen Kanga before when they're holding these upper floor bomb sites. They like to run around on the bottom. They like to use it to waste time and force some kind of room clear from these other teams. So that's Sinister being ready for that. Vinny down there with a the drone, nice and early. Saw it, pushed in, got the pick. Uh, love it from them. And that's the first minute giving them a man advantage. Could be another engagement here quite shortly. Fisher guy will just get away. Spruce Alex not to follow his prey. Instead, just wait over at the top of white. Sinister with quite a strange attack so far. It's taken them a long time to make their way onto the roof or over towards Cigar Lounge. And they only have half the round left now. I'm um, definitely something that could start to come back against Sinister here. They have taken a little while to get that piano control. They do have Dope on that Maverick, so if they're going to be using that as hard breach in towards Vaxor, they want to rotate there at least. They're going to have to really start to get to work on the wall. Is electrified, but it's not going to do much to counter the Maverick. Dope will finally start it up here. It's going to put a bit more pressure on the Kanga, and Campo isn't going to be able to play in Vaxor for much longer. C4 not hitting the mark there again. Some wasted utility from Kanga they could have used for Denial. They do still have the Echo though, so both going to be able to give them intel and another opportunity for Denial later. Milo wasting an ash charge there on the wall as it was electrified. So fear will clean that up though. Fisher guy helping to open the wall. Flashes now will be sent out. Time well and truly against Sinister. 30 seconds on the board. Four defenders up. 
to try and deplete more time. Meloska will get aggressive over towards Pixel. Instead, may try and push through the breach. They just don't seem to have much direction at the moment. A couple of shots will rain out. Meloska makes his way in freeze, but is shut down. And it's a 4v4. Campo follows up with another one to Fisho guy. As the frags do come out, Nico from below finds Spruce. Nade goes out as Derpe goes for the plant. Not sure the coverage is there though. Vinny is getting aggressive with the pistol. Doesn't quite land enough shots though. Will he be taken out? He is. And now it's Nico to try and hold the post plant. It's a one on two. Nico gets aggressive towards the rotate, but is shut down. And Kanga will get two rounds straight. Sinister just really lacking any sort of presence in towards site late round. And Kanga are making them pay. And to think about the fact that that was going in as a five versus four, I'm just amazed that Sinister weren't able to make more headroom there. Kanga, again, playing it simple. They just held their positions and just waited for Sinister to push through. So it's really well played from Kanga. Sinister just not reading into that enough and thinking about how to better displace them. And I was about to say, I think Nico should be bringing the buck because really what he needed to do was go below in that instance and buck out those guys on Cocktail. That was really what came back to bite Sinister. Vinny had to try and go deep, didn't get any picks, and it just kind of fell apart. Well, 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 this is not a result or a start, at least, of this map that I don't think many expected, myself included. 2-0 in favour of Kanga, who, keep in mind, are yet to win a map at all here in Six Masters 2020. Of course, keep in mind, Cafe tends to be defend decided, so... Don't read into the scoreline too much yet, but I think the fact that Sinistar do appear to be struggling quite a bit is a fair indication that Kanker's causing them some headaches already. Yeah, I think to an extent as well, maybe Sinister are just kind of outplaying themselves. I mean, they're getting map control. They're lacking a little bit of time management to an extent. I mean, they got into piano pretty late there, but they still had just under a minute. I think it was about 50 seconds by the time they had back store wall open. So they still had time to make things happen. I just don't think they're making enough happen. You know, like the vertical control is really critical. And even when they got some vertical control on that kitchen attack in round one, they weren't working any picks and they weren't really displacing those defenders. Big ups to Novaic so far as well. I believe he's on three kills so far. Definitely been a strong start for him. There we go. Thank you. I believe MC is observing, I'm not too sure. <laughs> but thank you very much for showing us the kills there. Oh, it's Marshall. Thank you, Marshall. Appreciate it, my dude. But yeah, he's been showing up so far for his team. And look, I don't think he could come into more of a pressure situation versus a team that's in form on a team that isn't. Maybe it's the sort of motivation he needs to perform here. Might just be. Sinister again, going top down, as are most attacks on Cafe. Nick on the buck, we'll see what kind of work he can do with it. For this vertical control, not as uh, helpful, I guess, from below on attacking a site, but if they do get Cocktail, that's really where he can tear it up. See whether Kanga decide to contest, but it looks like they're again playing a very simple hold their line defense. Oh, Leb gets a pick there onto Derpe. So Sinister, once again, not getting that opening pick, which will make things trickier late in the round here. Fisher Guy getting aggressive as we've eclipsed the halfway point of the round, trying to get some headway in towards Cocktail. Leb is holding that. Spruce as well below with Intel. Goes for a C4. A little bit too early there. Fisher Guy's actually made his way all the way in towards Sight. He's shut down though eventually. That was pretty aggressive from him. Vinny as well with some aggression above gets one, but the C4 will down him. Sinister just falling apart at the moment. I, I don't really understand what they're doing. I'm not sure if even they understand what they're doing at the moment. It just looks like a little bit of a mess. I'm not too sure either. Fisher going solo straight into reading. I mean, it did provide some kind of opening for Vinny to take over Cocktail, but it's done a lot of damage. I mean, Vinny and Nico are both one shot. Milo's the only one on full HP, and he's yet to find a kill in, this, in the map. So Kanga just playing really well. It was good teamwork as well. Spruce didn't overpeak. Leb was the one to... Peek out from Laundry, and I think Novaik's also peeked out onto Fisher Guy. So we're seeing some really great stuff here from Kanga. 30 seconds now on the board. Sinister with a massive HP deficit here, could cost them late round. Nick on the buck is holding above Vinny. Will dunk on one, that's Campo. 
As Moloska was prepped for the plant. Keep in mind, he's the only player with full HP. If Vinny gets taken out here, surely they can't win the round. He's holding such a fine angle. Oof, but from above, Neko gets one. There's one more on the board as well as Novax gets a triple in this round. And with the diffuser drop, Sinister will once again be left to watch Nico try and clutch up a round that can't be won. And there we go, Kanga will take three straight. Man, I mean, it's just, it's just not clicking at the moment. It's really not. Um, it's looking very disjointed from Sinister and great from Kanga. They're just really not overextending. I think that is the biggest point here is they're not trying to do anything dramatic and not trying to make something special happen. It's like I was saying earlier, they're not trying to play cute, anything like that at all. It's very simple. They're holding their positions and they're doing their best to play really nice, cohesive, team-oriented Siege. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like anything special is coming out. It just feels like every time we're observing Sinistar, it always feels like they're looking at each other a bit too much, trying to work out what everyone's doing. It doesn't feel like the Sinister that we've grown to love recently, where they've flowed as a unit. It just appears like they're a little bit disjointed Kango just sort of sitting there, waiting, a couple of picks, and they win the round. They're not doing anything. There's not been any massive plays yet from Kango at all. No, exactly. Um, I mean, Novaeg's had a, a pretty good instrumental effort in that previous round because Sinister were in planting there, but he just went off. And I think that again points to Sinister struggling with their teamwork. They had Nico above with perfect angles. He did manage to get one pick, but he allowed Novaeg's to come around and got two. That was the two players that were there in reading. So things aren't working out for them, whether it's comms, whether they're just, I don't know, just messing up. It's not on for them at the moment. Either way, they, they're asleep at the wheel. Yeah, I mean, the concerning thing for Sinister, let's have a look at or talk about the standings at least. They're on 12 points at the moment. So they're equal with Pittsburgh Knights who are in fourth and Alifo who are in sixth. Ferox are training by only three points. They're in seventh. So if they manage to lose a map here... Oh, here we go. Here's the standings. Thank you. There we go. So if they manage to lose tonight, that is not going to vote well for them. Even if they lose the one map, that puts them at a big disadvantage at that mid-table. Yeah, it really could be incredibly detrimental to them. I mean, Knights, LFO, and Ferox are all yet to play. Uh, and if Sinistar struggle to get all the points required tonight, all those teams could essentially leapfrog them and they could be looking at all of a sudden being in seventh place. I mean, that, that's a bit of a reality. Not quite as dramatic, I'd say, but regardless, they could see themselves really struggling to stay in touch with playoff contention. If they continue the form they're showing so far in Cafe, I mean, it's been three rounds, but it hasn't been great. It's not like Sinistra making terrible errors, but they're not also making big plays, and Kanga also aren't doing anything to excel. It's just, I don't know, it's just Kanga being simple. And I guess it's always one of those classic storylines where Kanga, all the way at the bottom there in the standings, almost don't have anything to fight for. I mean, mathematically, they might still be a chance to make the top four just if they win like every map from now on in. But let's be honest, it's not probably going to go that way, or it's very unlikely for it to go that way. So then Kanga, they're just out here having some fun, testing some new stuff, testing the roster change. And I mean, <laughs> look, we're only three rounds in, but so far, it's, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, and we talked about it a bit in the pre-show. It can be a danger if you're a team in the playoff contention and you're facing Kanga. That kind of puts so much more pressure on you than Kanga because they've got nothing to lose, essentially. They're down there in eight. They haven't won a map yet in six Masters. They've done roster changes. They're just trying to make stuff happen. And you're in a playoff contention spot. You're trying to secure these points. Kanga might be able to gel something together and that could really just end your chances. Well, we are back from the re-host, so both teams have had a chance to collect their thoughts on the first three rounds. Sinister really looking to try and get some on the board and maybe even even, maybe even even, maybe even <laughs> even out the half. Terrible choice of words. Wow, <laughs> that was, oh, that was so bad. Oh, wow. And we should be in for an interesting rest of the half, shouldn't we, Matt Raven? <laughs> yes, yes, we should be. Uh, look. I, I gotta hope that Sinistar had a bit of a quarter time spray there, seeing as we're about a quarter of the way through the map, depending on where the scoreline gets to. But they've, they need to wake up. Like, th things need to be happening here. One great change again, Nico on the buck. He did a good job with Sledge last time. They had that vertical control, but he didn't manage to work any picks. And now with buck, the skeleton key is a little more efficient at opening vertical holes. I think they can have some more success with that. They just need to be careful of C4s. 
maybe the missing piece in the puzzle is Fisher guy needs to jump on a Monty or a Pinker. Oh, no way. <laughs> I was just about to say he's yet to get a kill yet, but obviously the, the kills reset after the rehost, so that is null and void. But yeah, it doesn't feel like anyone from Sinister is having a massive impact so far. Need one of them or two of them after this rehost to really step it up. Try and give their team some momentum or... Look, this map could start to slide away. Keep in mind, it is Sinister's map pick as well. So that would be even more detrimental to their momentum. And speaking of players stepping up, I mean, the one from Kanga that's stepped up the most, I've got to say, is Nevaeh. So it's his first game, mm. and he's having a really good one. Uh, he somewhat single-handedly saved that previous round for them on reading. So that's uh, really good to see out of their newest player. Looks like Sinister once again are going for a top-down take. There are some barricades up here and hatches reinforced. So there has been some utility invested by Kanga in an attempt to slow down this take. Nico getting to work on that skeleton key, which, as you mentioned, quite efficient these days. A lot of ammo to work with and Nico can do Nico things and create lots of interesting angles. No picks yet, though. Sinister, try and find one. Oh, there's a player to the left here of Vinny. Will he see them? There was a bullet hole produced earlier. Vinny could get shot in the back here. Oh, we'll make it out. Oh, maybe not. Oh, he gets lit up, but Fisher guy does save him. That's Leb taken out. And since they get the early pick. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate timing for Leb there. He could have at least traded himself out. Not to be. One thing that was really important about that top floor is Nico used so many of those skeleton key shots onto walls up there or floor up there, which means there's going to be less used on site. Equal man advantage now coming into the final minute, so Kanga definitely still very much in this. Gonna hold some patient angles vertically is Nico and an aggressive hold in Bakery here. Milo just runs straight into it by himself, no refrag potential at all. Kanga again are in a great position coming into the final stages of this round. Spruce as well below still gathering so much intel here. Finny gets one, is traded out there by Campo, leaving it up to Nico and Fisho guy. Nico, in so many of these rounds, has been the last one alive, just struggling to have an impact or at least assist his team getting around wins. Fisho guy, meanwhile, is at that bar. His one shot, a single bullet will take him out. And again, this is looking like it will go Kanga's way, surely. Kanga, don't let this one slip away. This is 10 seconds left. Fisher guy now forced to send it in towards site. Head checks to the left and gets one. That's Boats. Can he find a second? Keep in mind the diffuser is down. They need to go for kills. He will. That's Spruce taken out. And now Campo on the castle inside of Bakery. Just needs to play time. Do they find him? They don't. I think Nico ran straight past him potentially. I'm not too sure what happened there. Uh, he but ran outside. Was he, he outside? Was he? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, that is unfortunate. <laughs> wow. That oh, is. Yeah. Smart. Smart play though. Smart play just to run Very outside tough. and ice the time. Um, I didn't see where Diffuser was, so I'm not sure whether def like planting was an option for Sinister. Maybe that's what Kanga capitalized on. They knew where Diffuser was, so they just got out of dodge, got outside, and iced the round. And look, Kanga, four rounds in a row, guys. They're up 4 0. Yeah, it uh, definitely sounds weird hearing you say that, to be completely honest. Did not expect that at all. Even, honestly, even if Sinister managed to get one or two rounds in this half, it's not looking good. This is feeling like the Sinister of old to some extent. Just, I don't know. Something isn't clicking. And that rehost hadn't, hasn't really seemed to give them any sort of break in this momentum. Kanga are still playing quite strong here and Man, it's definitely concerning if you're in the Team Sinister camp. It is, and it's going to be just stacking more and more pressure, and that's, again, something that's going to work in favour of Kanga, because even though they're up 4-0, they probably still aren't really feeling that much pressure. Like, they're just going to be having some fun, working on some stuff, and it's working out, and that's cool, and that doesn't create any extra pressure for them, it just creates more pressure for Sinister. So that's going to be really tough for Sinister to continue to manage, and... Again, solo plays, I think, was a big issue in that previous round. I mean, Milo was just yeeted into Bakery, seemed completely unaware there was actually two players there, and he didn't manage to even get one of those picks. 
And I think one of Sinister's strengths of recent has been their ability to refrag. So far this evening, it does feel like there's been a couple of plays here and there where uh, entries are just sending it in, not finding picks and not being refragged, which only <laughs> causes more frustration for your remaining teammates who need to play at that deficit. So hopefully they can tidy that up here as Derpe does get one. So that's Bruce taken off the board. I believe that may have been on a roam downstairs. So at least now they have a bit of breathing room heading into the rest of this round. A good start. Last time though that they had a five versus four early advantage, they still weren't able to ice out a round. Let's see whether they can change it for them this time. Fisho swiftly in through train on the second floor. They secured some good map control. There's Vince here down on the first floor as well. There is a player actually just around reading there that Leb and Fisher are about to engage. Leb is not going to be able to see Fisher before the bullets come out. So this is looking much better for Sinister so far. Hopefully they can continue it and get their first round. I must say, it feels like every week Leb just plays in stranger and stranger positions on these rooms. And, uh, so far tonight, it's produced mixed results on that occasion. It didn't really do much. And here we go. Sneeko will now be clearing out Cocktail, which is what you flagged earlier, Raven. So Kanga will find it harder to sit on this side of the map. Yeah, and it's one of the or best not. places to knife from above. Oh my lord, Novaeg's actually just deletes Nico. And that means that more of those skeleton keys aren't going to come out. And he can sit more comfortably. He actually sits over a hole, though. Not sure what that was about, but Vincia will capitalize. That means it's all up to Boats and Campo to be able to hold this round for Kanga. It's a two on four. This is the really the first round in a long time that Sinister has looked like winning. Can they convert, though? Derpe gets one. Boats now left into one on four. Finds two. Surely they don't let this round slip away. Boats on a slither of HP oh. finds one more. Vinny now left in a one on one as he repels in. He has full HP. He might not have intel though, as he's just holding the angle. He needs to be mindful of the time as Boats is looking to try and extend it as long as possible. The diffuser is collected. And Vinny will go for the plant. Keep in mind, it takes seven seconds. Boats will definitely be able to hear it as he crouches. Up. Does he know where it is? He head checks it once. Oh my god, he almost hits the shot. But Vinny will win the round for his team. And oh my goodness, that was messy. Vinny almost died there. And that would have been Kanga's fifth round straight, but it just wasn't meant to be. And Sinister will finally get one on the board. Look, messy is a great way to describe it. And yeah, Sinister did win the rounds, but. It was close to not being their round again. It, it's still looking very shaky for them. Uh, I'm a bit concerned how it's going to go for the rest of the map. We'll see whether they can start to rein it back in on their attack half. They've got one more, oh sorry, defense half. They do have one more attack though. It's going to be reading, which they did lose last time. Man, I didn't, I didn't want to curse it, but in the back of my mind during that Boats' attempt at clutching now, I was thinking, oh my god, don't do it, don't do a sin throw, okay. don't do the old Sinister stuff, because I mean, reflecting back to like season 11, their first half of that Pro League season, there were many rounds like that that they managed to throw away, and in a similar fashion, man advantage, just not having that confidence to end out these rounds, and man, it almost happened again. Luckily, Vinny, last week's MVP was able to step up. They do get that round on the board, but again, it's looking very, very sketchy here for Sinister. And that could just be a sign, again, of the of mounting pressure for Sinister in this match, given that they are so many rounds behind on a, a match they probably would have been backing themselves to be, just be dominating in. So that's going to be adding up. It's going to cause more mistakes. They need to be able to steady the ship a bit. Sorry, I was... Just having a little bit of a coughing fit there. But we're back. We're good. <laughs> good to be back. Glad you're alive. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Leb. Go for a spawn pick. That's a bit cheeky. Again, playing in a peculiar position. Still with the shield in hand as well. So I'm expecting him to place that down. And he will inside of Cocktail. As soon as I look to try and progress through the top of this map. Our management pretty decent so far. Got on the roof pretty quick. Hatches open. They're droning out. So they're going to be able to get some pressure in towards Cocktail a bit sooner than previous rounds. Which is 
going to be helpful for them. They can clear out Cocktail and give themselves a lot of time to clear out Reading. Then they might have a much well, better chance at planting. But I mean, last time, Nico did have that vertical control to hold Reading, and the plant was still not successful. It's just about them tightening up some of those team plays. Again, Spruce gathering intel. I think he's played Pulse every round so far this evening. An operator that he has played quite a bit on across the season and particularly on this map. Providing a lot of valuable information to the rest of his team. My word, this round's gone quick. We're almost halfway through and Sinister just yet to gain any meaningful control. Now trying to progress over towards Cocktail, but time is running short here. That's going to take some effort to be able to clear out Cocktail properly. That's going to help though as Nico gets Campo. It's a, a C4, not going to be able to use it as well from the mid. And he's just going to push up. He's holding a nice little pixel there in the corner. That C4 almost gets fish over, but not quite. He's finished off by a Spruce from below. The boats also adds for one. Kanga looking pretty good here. They get another through the floor. It's falling apart for Sinister Guards. Not looking like they might be able to get another round here. Neko and Dope are on full HP. Spruce and boats low, so they might not be able to find those picks, but again, their refragging really lacked during that cocktail take and it cost them. Dope now running the LMG, will try and enter in towards reading, pre-firing all of the common angles, but doesn't find a pick. Again, Kanga playing it smart, playing it passive, and Nico gets time there. Falls off that angle behind the shield. He tries to progress in towards train. Dope flames out that position as they try and work together here. There is a player at the top of white. Dope sees the gun but can't get the kill. Novak shuts him down. And Nico is once again left to clutch it out. It is a one on two. Boats has been downed. But there's nothing he can do. He doesn't know where these defenders are. And that is one of the cleanest rounds. Or cleanest halves rather. That we've seen from Kanga all season. And Sinistar just falling apart. I've got to say, hands down, that's probably Kanga's best half so far in Six Masters, so pat on the back to them. They're up 5-1. They're only two rounds away from getting their first map in Six Masters. And it is against Team Sinister, who is a team hard pushing for a top four spot. I mean, all Six Masters, the storyline for us has been that Sinister are looking like a genuine top four team. But right now, Kanga is just all over them on Cafe. I think it's going to be very telling how this first defense plays out. If Sinister managed to win it quite comfortably, then maybe we could see a reverse sweep of sorts. But, man, that, that first half doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. Attackers need to locate and defuse I don't know. The, um, they can. the thing I've had in the back of my head so far in this half is, why did Sinister go to this map in the first place? Because, I don't know. I want, I'm keen to ask them later if we get an interview because I still can't quite put my finger on why they'd go here. It's, it seems like quite a risky choice and so far it's uh, not quite paid off. Me on to them to try and bring this one back now. Yeah, I've just got to assume that it has to come down to the fact that Kanga's played this map a lot. So maybe they just felt, you know what, Kanga's played this a lot. They've never won it. We can just counter that. They're not going to change much and we should be fine. It also gives Sinister an opportunity because if they did manage to win it, I mean, Cafe doesn't look like it is one of Sinister's best maps. So it allows them to, you know, hold on to some of their stronger maps for later in the season. You know, hide some strats, you could call it. But if that is the case, wow, it's really backfiring. <laughs> Time will tell. And Sinister are, of course, now defending. But they have a big deficit to catch up on here. Early shots raining out from Nico. Won't find his target. It's Kanga ah, setting up, I believe, for some sort of horizontal take, potentially, just straight into Bakery. Campo has actually... Is he in sight? Um, okay, so Campo's in sight. Not sure where the defenders are. This could be very costly, but Vinny shuts him down. Lev gets one back, though, and that could have been very, very concerning for Sinister. There's no Vags. He's actually going for the plant. He will fall off it, though. As the frags will come out, Sinister managing to shut down this aggression as Meloska tries to flank and gets one more, but he is air jabbed, I believe. And now it is a two on one. A lot going out here. Only one minute into the action phase, and it's a one on two. <laughs> Novaics. Oh, the newest member of this roster coming in for tonight. Wastelanding some shots there. Both Dope and Vinny are 
basically on one shot of HP as no Vex is getting lit up by the wall behind him as well. And he is taken out by the Electro Claw. Team Sinister managed to take the round. Oh, what a what a kill cam. Oh, yes. Mm. Elite gameplay. Hold on. <laughs> what was that round, guys? I don't know. Just... <laughs> That was nuts. I mean, Kangra, I guess, trying to just keep some momentum in their favor. I mean, look, you got to say, if that worked out, sure, they would have only been one round away from match point. The big payoff, though, would have been the mindset. Because if they managed to secure a rush against Sinistar and won it, that would have been so detrimental to Sinistar, moving forward even to the next map. But it didn't work out. I mean, it's, that's how it is. It's a risk to do rushes. Uh, yeah. That was a, a very quick round. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it wasn't that far away from being winnable, really. It was pretty close. You know, I mean, it was a great retake by Sinister in the end, but there were a couple of moments where Kanga looked like they might have had it. I mean, no vagues. Almost managed to stick the plan. If that went down, it could have been a very hard round to recover, but Sinister do survive. They start to try and crawl some momentum back, but... Again, it is such a big deficit to crawl back from. On top of that too, I mean, like if I was Sinister, I still wouldn't be overly satisfied with that round. Because it was uh, a rush, and whatever you want to call it, I mean, like you said, it did it did almost pay off. It came down to a 2v2. The VX was pretty close to making that work. I wouldn't feel comfortable as Sinister. I mean, it's not like they had dramatic strategy changes or did something beautifully as a team to win that. So they're still going to be struggling here, and they are still three rounds behind. And that's the beauty of the lead that Kanga have built for themselves. Nico roaming all the way down in Kitchen. This could be interesting. Not quite sure what he's doing down there. Maybe preparing for some sort of bakery run out. That could be interesting. He is looking for any drones, but... Alexa maybe not go for that. And Kanga again. I feel like I've seen this before, trying to clear Cocktail from the windows and have a player below. I could be mistaken, but I feel like they have done something similar in the past. Yeah, no, they have. Uh, it definitely seems to be the way Kanga like to attack this site, which is a pretty different to the way of a lot of teams. And it's it could work out. I mean, the hardest part of attacking this top floor in general is usually flushing out those Cocktail positions, because that's where you can comfortably anchor in You've got those denial-style operators that can just sit there comfortably. If you are able to clear that out early and even get picks from it, it should, in theory, make the rest of the attack a bit simpler. I, will watch over I was really hoping Nico was going to C4 out that door. <laughs> he might have been able to find two picks, but it wasn't meant to be. Spruce, meanwhile, playing on Buck, trying to clear any players inside a cocktail from below. I don't think anyone from Sinister will be sitting there. I mean, if Sinister have done their voting, they should know this is what Kanga will attempt. So they should be well prepared. And how they deal with it, Nico is the only one that's really directly trying to deal with this. He's the one on the room, and he's got a chance to sneak up white stairs, which nobody is watching. I mean, I thought Leb from reading... Oh, he is now. He just misses it, though. Vinny does find the opening pick on the Campo. Nico has been... Sneaking around here for such a long time, and the longer that Kanga are unaware of this, it really could come back to be super detrimental. Spruce as well peeking towards the stairs. Both players do fall off in the end, and Nico could be in a great position for a couple of late round kills. And there we go. There's one. That's Spruce taken off, and it's a four on two as Vinny gets no vacs as well. Leb forced to repel in. Will surely be shut down. He is lit up and will be taken off the board. And Boats is now the sole member on this attack. Left to try and salvage the round, but he's getting lit up all the way from the new Balk. Now one shot of HP and this strategy from Kanga hasn't paid dividends as Sinistar will close out the round. Again, still trying to salvage some momentum. It doesn't quite feel like they're back on top yet. However, it's starting to feel a little bit more winnable now. Yeah, it was definitely better from them. Uh, they, I like they had the confidence to just straight up peak directly back into those bucked holes. It meant that they got a few picks out of it. Kanga didn't feel comfy in reading and they never really were able to clear out that cocktail spot. Nico is staying very patient on white stairs. Ended up working out really well as well for Sinister. So maybe some good comms and just great timing there. 
Working out well. They're two rounds behind now, so they are clawing it back ever so slightly. Reading in fire place will be selected here by Team Sinister for the first time in this second half. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. It's an objective that has been played twice so far this evening, both in fact going in favour of Kanga. Funnily enough, the only round that Sinister actually did win on their attack was the top floor. Off the back Attackers of a clutch. <laughs> I mean, maybe we'll see something similar here from Kanga if they start to struggle and that will really tighten up the scoreline as we head deeper and deeper into this match. And while Kanga are only two rounds away from the map win, uh, importantly as well, they're one round away from at least forcing overtime. So if I'm Sinister, like, you really just don't want Kanga to be winning even any other rounds because if you have to push it to overtime, just a longer map, longer series, and it still gives Kanga that inkling to get in. Sinister, if they can get it back to 5-5, I mean, I touched on Mindset before, that's going to be really positive for the Sinister Mindset, and I think that might end up being too much for Kanga to deal with. Maloska, interestingly enough, playing Ala, an operator that doesn't see a whole lot of playtime in comp. It's a bit of an interesting choice that has caught my eye playing her over towards Pixel. Kanga electing to go for a more traditional take on this occasion, dropping red stairs and will likely sweep through Cigar Shop and Cigar Lounge. But I don't think Sinister are going to make it too easy here. They have a very really strong hold to try and slow down some time. Definitely going to be tough for Kanga to get that East Control around Cocktail. Derpe hard contesting at White Stairs window as well. That's Bruce that was there. He sledged open that castle just to put pressure on Sinister, being able to rotate down the White Hallway and down the White Stairs. But either way, Sinister holding tight here, and it's almost half the round down. Kanga haven't been able to obtain much control at all. Derpe still holding this angle on White Stairs. Really doesn't know if there's a player repelling. Charged off his crosshair placement. Boats tried to send a drone in, but missed. The second one does make it through the window, but is denied by Maloska. So Derpe's position may not be revealed as Kanga will begin to push up through white. Vinny gets the first there onto Boats, though. So a nice pick for him and his team. Kanga really needs to start, get, go, start getting a move on here as some vertical will be created by that C4. Campo misses his shots, though. Can't get the pick. They really have struggled to get good control here, Kanga, and that's going to start really working against them now. Sinister so comfortably holding on around White Stairs. Bruce finally gets the opening pick for Kanga to make it a five versus four. This frag grenade hits though, that could be big for Kanga. Not going to make any damage though. Ampo pushes through, cleans up White Stairs finally. It's a nice refrag from Milo. And a refrag again from Spruce, so that's actually going to give Kanga the man advantage now, guys. Coming into the final part of the round. There's a C4 on the roof. Not sure if that's still in play. It probably is. There's no vagues. We'll get one more for his team. And Fisho Guy now left in a one on three. So many angles that can be watched from here. He gets aggressive on the breach and gets one. Doesn't get refragged. Still plenty of HP to play with. 15 seconds left. 15 seconds left on the ball. Those footholes will net him another one. And now Leb needs to find the pick or go for the plant. The pick is definitely the more viable option here. pre fires around the corner and Leb will hit the shot. Kanga now on match point. And Sinister just being left red face so far here on Cafe. Oh, that pre fire was huge from Leb. Massive round from Kanga. And match point for them is a situation that. Us, and I think it was 80% of the people <laughs> on the poll did not expect here. So, oof, this is a pretty big deal. Oh, wow, wait, I cannot believe this map is as close as it is. Valiant effort here from Fisher Guy. Great couple of picks, but Leb there pre frame that corner. Four seconds to go on the timer, and he wins the, t the round for his team. So much pressure. On Sinister, though, I can't imagine how they're feeling at the moment. I mean, losing any map at this stage in the season is massive. But against Kanga of all teams, 
That is going to hurt. They really, really need to step up here or this is going to be a really bad situation for them. Absolutely. This really could be detrimental to their season. Uh, I think that's the one of the biggest things to come out of this if Kanga do manage to get the map. It's not just the fact that Kanga have won their first map, but it's more so that this could really mess up Sinister being a, what everybody has expected as a top four finishing team. This could really hinder their chance to hold on to a top four spot. And of course, keep in mind, this is actually Team Sinister's map pick. They lose their own map pick against the one team that's yet to win a map so far at all in this entire competition. That will cut deep. That will hurt so hard. But hey, they have an opportunity to bring this back. It's not over yet. There is overtime here in Six Masters. So if Sinister win the next three rounds, we will head into that phase. And I mean, so far, the rounds that Sinister have won on their defense have looked pretty strong. It's really just that last one that looked a bit dicey. So we'll have to wait and see what they can bring to the table. That being said, though, their first defense was that rush. And that was the last time they held Kitchen. So yet to see really how their Kitchen has been properly stress tested besides to a rush. I mean, they, the collapse ended up being okay when they countered the rush. Still looked a little bit 50-50. Kanga pushing with structure this time. They're also opting for this top down clear as he led here on this bar cocktail. They're gonna be able to pick up all the utility and they're gonna be able to obtain some pretty good vertical map control. But time is gonna be the biggest factor here. Kanga, pretty satisfied with their control of the top four, will now progress to the second. Doesn't appear as if anyone from Sinister is holding this floor, so it's really just a time waster at the moment for Kanga to clear. Beginning to approach the halfway point in this action phase. Kanga will now need to try and convert this control to some sort of vertical presence. Or else Sinister will be able to basically just sit where they are quite comfortably. I mean, even as it is at the moment, most of their players are off site, so maybe this presence from above from Kanga won't really be too helpful in helping to win this round. Yeah, wait and see how it pans out. What Spruce can do with vertical control could be pretty critical here if he manages to get a pick or at least flush out some of these deep positions. It's gonna enable things a bit easier for Kanga. There is still somebody holding onto Bakery for Sinistar. In fact, there are two players around there as Nico is hanging out around the bus stop window. So if Kanga are gonna try and get that control, it's gonna be pretty critical. And speaking of, that's Vincia taking out from above by Spruce. Vertical play working out for Kanga, giving themselves about 40 seconds now to try and get an execute happening. Kanga one round away from winning their first map in the season as they open these walls in towards Bakery. You know, Vaix looks to try and put even more pressure here on Team Sinister, who really cannot afford to lose a map tonight. 20 seconds left on the board and Fisho will keep his team's dreams alive by finding one. Not much time left on the board here, and Fisher guy with the flank will find another. Leaving Kang with only a couple of members on the board. It's gonna be so, so challenging to win this round as Boats is now left in the one on three. Is taken down by Molosko and Sinister will hold on for another round. A great sign of grit there from Sinister because it was looking pretty good for Kanga when Spruce was able to take out it was Vinny from above, and then he tagged Derpe low on site. I thought once they had wall open, they wouldn't have been able to get in and get the plant down. But Sinister worked it really well. A good somewhat retake, pushing around the red hallway, retaking Bakery, and even above as well. I think it was Fisher that took above. That was a great job by them. They do salvage it. They're still two rounds behind, though, and that's just to force overtime. Bar and Cocktail will be the battlefield for round number 11. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs it's only been attempted can. once thus far here by Team Sinister, where they did manage to take the round. The question is, what can Kanga do to mix things up? Last time we saw them go for that Eastern Attack Raven over towards Cocktail. Maybe something more traditional this round, because it didn't quite pay off in that last attempt. Yeah, I mean, I still like the the idea behind it, but 
Mm. They need to do more than just focus on that east side because even if you clear out Cocktail, if you have no pressure on Piano, no one at Skylight, well then those positions all just get pushed towards the bar and there's still so many angles in towards Cocktail, there's no way you'll get a plant down just by simply doing that. I think there needs to be more added into it, but I do like just the increased emphasis on clearing it out because it is usually what comes back or is the difficulty for a lot of teams on attacking this top floor. Well, there are a couple of members of Kanga that have spawned on that west side. Diffuser in hand as well. But maybe we'll see a bit more pressure. They will be greeted by Maloska there inside of the lounge if they go for it. Spruce. Putting some pressure there over towards the Christmas tree. Maloska, does he have a bullet hole, maybe? Or, oh, it looks like he has a punch hole. There we go. Yeah, punch hole. So he's been able to watch the window, but Spruce thinks better of it and will head to the roof. So far in the first minute, not seeing a whole lot in terms of Kanga's intentions. Looks like it might be more of the traditional push thing as they are just stacking on the roof. Uh, I do hope that they create something on the east side though seeing as they've invested so much practice into pushing that side but if they do get this piano control then they're going to have a pretty good chance here looks like there's an aggressive player from sinister though in cigar i believe it's fisher with a shotgun so they're gonna have to be careful about that fisher guy very proficient with the shotgun derpe covers the first drop so that's a five on four Anchor well and truly dedicating to this push from Red as Leb gets one back. Fisher guy in close quarters will miss the first shots, but hits the second. That Spruce taken down and he'll try and find another. Oh, Flash comes out. Will he be white? No, but he gets shot in the back. No vagues. We'll bring this back to a three on three with just over a minute to go. Yeah, that could have been really detrimental there. And he's going to actually have to use an exothermic charge just to get into Piano. Still has... One in the pocket though, if he wants to use it on backstore, which I imagine is the intention. There is a player still at Pixel. You have to think about flushing that. Leb is looking to peek around from the new balcony here. And actually, they're just going to leg it into bar. They're not even going to bother with Piano. They're going deep here. And if Sinister don't have the intel, this could come back to bite them. It's a two on two as the frags come out. It's actually Leb now left in a one on two against Dope and Vinny. As he's behind the bar now. Have doesn't have the diffuser in hand trying to find utility so he's likely being spotted at the moment and if that's the case sinister can just sit back and wait and they have to wait out another 30 seconds that time depleting quickly doesn't look like lev has a lot on his end in terms of intel instead head checking a lot of these common angles forces himself in towards freezers he's getting lit up from both sides sinister have the perfect pinch here and surely they can't lose the round they won't and now we are one round away from overtime or the win going in favor of kanga this one definitely very spicy so far i can't believe we're going this long but hey we are <laughs> yep definitely could be seeing overtime and i mean kanga took okami to overtime on this map as well they did end up losing that eight six didn't quite have the lead that they had in this game though, so for sure Kanga are going to be pretty disappointed with themselves if they do ultimately end up losing the map. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. They're still looking pretty good. I mean, that, that attack was alright. They struggled a bit obtaining piano control, but I love the decision to just ignore it. They just pushed through bar, and it almost worked out. <laughs> Unfortunately, Leb in that 2v1 situation, always going to be tough. They won reading dining last time based on a massive clutch of Leb. So they can do it again. Well, this is going to be their map. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Man, even I'm finding myself wiping my hands on my pants a little bit here. They're getting a bit sweaty. I didn't expect this game to be as intense as it is. And I mean, the Sinister, it's only going to be amplified. They're the ones actually having to endure this inside of the lobby, having to play with that pressure. <laughs> Definitely not a comfortable position to be in. But of course, not unwinnable. They're going to fight this as hard as they possibly can to get it to overtime and then finish it off. Hasn't been the best night for them so far, but still plenty to salvage and they'll definitely be looking to do just that. Just to bring it back a little bit here too, Nevaix has had such a good debut game for Kanga. I mean, we don't have the full scoreboard, but I believe in those first couple of rounds he was their top fragger. 
And now he's here playing hard reach on attack and he's still fragging out for them. I have no doubt he's in double digits. He's just been so solid. Given that it's his first game, I think that's really great. Definitely a great performance so far from him. Sinister, on the other hand, haven't really had any of their players step up massively so far. Instead, more of a consistent performance across the board. Olosko again, sticking the Ella over toward Pixel. We saw him have a little bit of an impact last time he played that position. Of course, that Scorpion, very, very difficult to tame even after that slight recoil nerf or recoil buff. As he is finding himself under pressure early here, but will retreat over towards Cocktail. They're definitely putting pressure there on that east side. Haven't managed to flush out any players. That grenade blowing up really close to Milo, but not really doing much damage. Not gonna help them a whole lot. Almost half the round gone. Still struggling here. They're in piano, trying to flush out these positions. Nothing going. They're gonna have to get some pretty solid vertical control in order to have a better chance coming into the late round. Sinister can sit patiently here and just ice the clock for as long as they want to. Well, that's a cheeky angle from Vinny. Sees that breach get open, we'll shoot, and we'll score. That's Campo taken down. Spruce as well will be shut down, and this well and truly could be heading to overtime. Kanga need to try and find a couple of picks here as time is running out as well. C4 goes out, but won't find its mark. One minute now left, Raven and Kanga starting to fall apart a little bit here. Yeah, it's not looking good oh. for them, but two big picks coming out for Kanga. Does give them a bit of a sniff there. It's up to Leb and Novaix, though, as Derpe's found another. That's three Sinister players on full HP. So they are sitting in a good chance here. Leb trying to use these vertical holes to find something. So is Novaix. They do find another and get it to 2v2. Well, it's very, very much possible. But with only 30 seconds, Heim is working against them. Fischer in a great spot with the shotgun. Definitely going to be a tough final moment, whether we go to overtime or not. 20 seconds will decide the fate of these teams here on Cafe. As Novaix and Leb will progress from the west. Novaix gets lit up. He tries to find a pick, but he can't. The footholds will shut him down. And now Leb is left in a one on three. He finds the first there onto Nico, but with five, five seconds, seconds left, surely he won't be able to do it. And he doesn't. Sinister will win the final round here in regulation. And now it's time for overtime. Man, I am shocked that we were in overtime. I think a lot of people, us included, were not expecting Kanga to be performing as well as they are in this series, let alone this map. And uh, look, this is fantastic. It's been a great contest. And Sinister are going to be the ones staying on defense here, which has been the heavy favored side. I mean, statistically, now you would have to back Sinister. There's only been two attack wins in 12 rounds. So surely, <laughs> if the statistics can stay on their side, they will be able to close this one out. But, I mean, I don't think we expect it to go to overtime, so nothing at this point is certain. Defenders, protect your Sinister, I'm sure, will be taking a bit of a deep breath. Managing to bring it all the way to overtime. It was a great effort in itself, but now it's time to steal the deal and get those three points. On top of that, I don't think Kanga have necessarily been playing that terribly with their attacks either. I yep. mean, some of them have actually looked half decent. And it's just come down to a matter of time in the way that Sinister have eventually played them out. So Kanga can hold confidence coming into this. I mean, all it takes is if they just win an attack. I mean, if they win this round, well, they are in a huge position to be able to close the round out on defense. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and Final preparations going up here from Sinister as they continue their campaign here on Cafe. Their first half was pretty terrible, really, by their standards. 5 1 in favor of Kanga, but they managed to crawl back there in that second half. As we find ourselves now in overtime, of course. But pressure is definitely not relieved yet. Sinister with a 
big weight on their shoulders as they try and close this one out. Show again, playing a very tight position here in Cigar. Caused some headaches last time for Kanga. They took a while to flush it out, and it did cost them a couple of men. I think it was two that actually died to Fisher in that spot. We'll have to think about a different way to clear it. Milo persisting with this frustrating little position there at the piano stage. If someone on Kanga dies to that, I'm sure they aren't going to be too happy about it. Well, the flushes will come out to try and deter him. Milo spinning it around, trying to dodge their effect. The worrying thing is that no one from Kanga is there to follow up on that utility, so it's a little bit of a utility dump gone to waste. Fisher, meanwhile, is holding that close position. A will fall back as the red wall is blown open. No bags taken down by Maloska. Is traded out though. That's now a 4 on 4. Oh! Is that Nico with an impact pull? I'm not too sure, but Boats does take a bit of damage, and now that bomb carrier is quite low. Yeah, but importantly, they have flushed away the person in Pixel. Boats ultimately does get downed, though, probably again to another Nico impact grenade below, causing some havoc with those impacts in a very unconventional way, so to speak. It does make it a three versus four. Sinister with the man advantage. Time ticking away as well, so clock advantage in favor of Sinister. Hanger going to have to get something moving here and try and equal this out, but Dope has something else to say about that. Four versus two now. It's not looking too good for Kanga in this first round of overtime. Kanga with their backs well and truly against the wall, but Fisho will miss that first shot. Doesn't matter though. Oh, maybe it will as Dope is shut down and there we go, Fisho as well. Campo showing up big here, despite not having the greatest map here so far, but Spruce will be taken down. No refray quite yet, but there we go, Vinny. He's shut down and it's now a one-on-one. -on -one. Shots raining out as Nico tries to hold on here. Bomb located by attackers. Only 15 seconds left here. Nico left in so many of these clutch scenarios so far on this map. And he finds himself in another. I think his position's been a real. The, the pre fire will come out, but Nico manages to clutch it out with the UMP. Way too close for comfort there again for Team Sinister, but Nico manages to find that frag and keeps their team in it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no. the heat that is honestly... up, man. There are some massive oh. rounds happening. <laughs> I don't know how Nico won that against Ash then. Oh, that was way too close. Campo was low HP. So I think if Campo yeah. was full HP, we could have seen a very different result to that round. And again, Kanka are playing really well. They they got some nice trades as they aggressively pushed through. Campo in particular, very instrumental in the fact that that was a possibility for Kanga. So great job from them, and now they get to rotate onto defense, which is again have been heavily favored. If they secure this, well then it all comes down to that final round. We are going to see a change of objective here in overtime, with Kangra electing to go to kitchen as opposed Defenders to the top floor. This will definitely spice things up a little bit. It's an objective that we have seen played a little bit so far tonight, with uh, varying degrees of success. I don't think anyone, in fact, no one has won an attack yet on this site. So that could make things quite interesting. Interesting. Oh, no, I said it. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely. Oh. Look, it's definitely going to be tough. I mean, this is a pretty tough site to attack. Um, but again, these teams have really defaulted to the top-down clears that take a lot of time, a lot of utility investment. And it often comes down to just really tricky executes. And it's not because of really anything other than the fact that it takes time to do that kind of push. So again, if Kanga stay comfortable and don't overextend, well, they're going to be in a great position to be able to close out the round. Looks again like Leb will be playing off-site on that mozzie. So he place a couple of his pests on the second floor, maybe trying to deny some intel for Team Sinister. Leb actually with the hatch popped. So can make a quick getaway. Spruce as well playing below barricade himself off, so... Quite an aggressive setup from Kanga so far. And I mean, time and time again, we have seen Sinister try and clear out these positions, so... It could work in Kanga's favor if Sinister aren't careful here. Yeah, this is definitely a bit risky. I mean, something that worked out so well for Kanga on their defenses was that they were playing patient, disciplined, 
and not really overextending to get picks here. And if Sinister are able to give themselves that opening kill early, it's going to put a lot of pressure back onto Kanga. Oh. Some damage inflicted there onto Nico. It's both Lev and Spruce. Will scurry away, and it looks like they have made the position known. But, I mean, they're already on the bottom floor, so <laughs> Sinister needs to be mindful that that is the case and not waste any more time here on this second floor. We have clips the halfway point. So far, their time management on the attack has been terrible, but this is the point where they might start to get stalled out. Yeah, and most importantly, it is needing to be Nico that is the one that needs to be putting the pressure vertically here as the buck. It needs to be opening a lot of holes. Flushing out these positions, even finding a pick if he can. We've seen before, Kanga aren't too afraid to be able to repeat them. He almost sees Spruce with the scanner out. Could have caught him sleeping, but caught sleeping is actually Nico running over the top of a C4. That's a big start now for Kanga as they enter the final minute on this defense. 50 seconds left in the round. If Sinister take it, the map will be theirs. But it looks like Kanga might well bring it to that final round as it is a three on five in the defender's favor. Well, Oscar with the Diffuser looking like he might try and go for a Freezer push. Interestingly enough, Vinny is rotating all the way towards Bakery. Maybe trying to pinch from either side, but at this stage, it's not looking great here for Sinister. Well, Oscar not satisfied. The drop is safe. He's hesitant. More drains heading out here from Derpe. He has control of Bar. Knows there's a player in Small Bakery, but there's no reason for that player to peek. And Surely he can just patiently wait as time is ticking down. Derpe forced to get aggressive. Misses the shot there. Oh my god. We'll eventually get it. And now it's a two on three as they enter in towards site. Milo gets one, but he's refragged out, leaving it all up to Derpe, who can't find the pick. And Kanga will win the round. Boats closing that one out for his team. And we're going all the way here. We are all the way. 7 7 in overtime. It was a good defense from Kanga, but also a good attack just then. It could have gone either way in those final moments. Sinister did a great job to bring it back. And it means that Sinister are going to be on defense. So Kanga are going to have to win their second oh, no. attack for the entire <laughs> game to be able to win this map. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't believe That's they right. did like that. Oh, that, was, that was a bit mean by production. <laughs> that was terrible. I don't know. Yeah, that was... We'll just skip past that. We didn't see that. All right. <laughs> that, that could have ended so badly for Derpe. He did actually get the kill in the end, fortunately. <laughs> oh, that would have been quite tilting. Either way, though, let's move on. 7-7. Seven, seven. The final round here on Cafe. Sinistar do have defense on their side. And so many of these rounds have been incredibly close, and Kanga definitely won't go down without a fight here. Oh, and their, their kitchen attack that they got really close on was actually their rush. Um, I'm not thinking that they're going to rush here, but I think it should be an indicator that maybe they could try and simplify their attack a little bit. Because that top-down clear does take a lot of time. To an extent, some coordination as well, especially to flush out these positions on site. They can simplify it a little bit. Maybe that'll work into their advantage. Also depends how Sinister's holding it. It looks like... They're extending a little bit here. Fisher holding on brown stairs as Milo is also going to run around this VIP side. Attackers drop the diffuser. I think they're preparing for a west tape. Be interesting to see if they try and flush out above. They didn't really do that on the last occasion. and Maybe again they'll head in straight from Bakery. Walls are electrified, so utility will need to be cleared. Ampo with a concussion in towards prep. Takes out the default. And I mean, so far, they're already getting some decent presence. Keep an eye on Novak. So he's the one on the Maverick. Once he starts to work on that wall, that'll help open up the round here for these attackers. Be important for Kanga to protect that Maverick if they aren't going to be clearing utility or getting vertical control. It's going to be totally key for this attack to be working out. Spruce may be able to do a late rotate up. Buck some holes as the Maverick is now going to be opening this wall. It's a real key part to how this round could play out here. If this Maverick is successful, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the Sinistar. 
inside here. Got a lot of control still. Nothing going as almost half the round has started to tick away. Derpe aware that Maverick is trying to get the wall. We'll try and counter peek it. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Very dangerous position for both teams here. Derpe in a fantastic position to give his team the edge. There was a player holding that angle, but no longer. Such an awkward engagement. Derpe thinks better of it as Vinny will get the first on the Valkyrie. Perfect intel here for him and the team. Surely this is Sinister's to lose. There's only a minute to go. And Tanga really struggling to get any sort of sight presence. Nico finds one more and this one's slipping away. And I'm surprised that the IQ has taken so long to push through. Vinny is finally picked out from prep there. He's going to give more control back to Kanga. They are looking to just funnel straight through prep and they're just going to go long. Sinister are very much aware. And this is going to start to get real messy guards as they funnel through to site. Molosko does find one though, and another there from Derpe. Sinister will close out the map. It was scrappy, but they managed to push through and get the points on the board. Man, Sinister will need a deep breath after that one because that was looking pretty sketch for most of that map. Oh, they've somehow managed to get away, guys. I thought for sure that was going to be Kanga with the dub. They've managed to get another overtime map on Cafe, but they still didn't get the victory. Kanga have got to be happy with that to some extent, though, right? I mean, even last week against Wildcard, they went 7-0, 7-2. Coming out strong this week against a team like Sinistar has got to feel that much better. And I mean, that is the longest game they have had in six Masters, so they definitely put up a good fight. And I mean... As you said, for the majority of it, it actually looked like it was going to go their way. And even the fact that they lost the game isn't necessarily a reflection that they choked or anything like that, because even those rounds that they were losing, they were pretty tight as well. And Sinistar just had the edge, I think, in the end with a little bit more coordination, a little bit more synergy, and it paid off. Yeah, to wrap it up for Kanga, I think that is hands down their best map of Siege they've played in Six Masters. So that's a really great sign for them. Uh, Sinister, on the other hand, uh, that's up there with one of their more shaky maps for sure. I mean, the first half looked pretty bad. We ended up did seeing a, a defender sided cafe, but even then, their attacks didn't look that close. I mean, at least Kanga actually looked like they had some chances with their attacks, whereas Sinister for a long time there just didn't look in it. Well, map number one just going in favor there of Team Sinister. But on the other side of the break, we will have the second one. We'll see you soon.
Well, 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 Six Masters once again providing the goods. We just had an absolute onslaught there on Cafe with Sinister edging out by a single round. Raven, what did we just watch? Put it in words because that was pretty crazy. Uh, we just watched Kanga showing up. Uh, it was one of their best maps, if not their best map, all of Six Masters. And Sinister struggling. And I mean, it was their map pick, so that was our biggest concern for a long time. Kanga just letting it slip away. They had a 6-3 lead at one stage and they failed to really do much after that other than that one overtime round. Well, I mean, we are now heading uh, soon into the second map, which will be Theme Park. That was Kanga's choice. So maybe this could be Kanga's first win of the season. Is that a possibility? I mean, it could be. Uh, considering how well they just played on Cafe, which was Sinister's map pick, you'd have to think they've got something up their sleeve for Theme Park, but not always the case. I believe it was their pick last week as well against Wildcard, and well, that ended up being 0-7. Different opponent though. I mean, Wildcard is a whole different game compared to Sinister. Yeah, I mean, we have seen Sinister actually play Theme Park before, and it was against Wildcard. The scoreline a little bit closer than when, as you mentioned, Kanga took on Wildcard. So, I don't know. I'm still probably going to have to back Sinister heading into this one, but I mean, we were both, and the community as well, pretty confident <laughs> that this is going to be a pretty quick night in favor of Sinister. And so far, it's been anything but. Yeah, it's just great to see that Kanga have been able to pull something out here. They've had that roster change. On top of that, I mean, Novaix had a fantastic map. I would love to see the final stats of what he ended up on because I think he was really instrumental in how well they played. So I think that leaves map two so open. I'm still leaning towards Sinister as well, but Kanga have now shown they, they have what it takes to pull together some coordinated siege and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sinister. Well, let's have a look at that poll vote that I touched on and see how many of you guys at home are already wrong and it will be, unfortunately, 13%. Kanga fans out there having another rough night so far, but hey, there's still a chance for the draw, which, again, could be on the cards if Kanga show up again here on Theme Park. And when you're a team that's struggling like Kanga, though, you take what you can. And I mean, to have an 8-7 map against Sinistar that, on a map that wasn't your map pick, I mean, that is a huge positive compared to a lot of their other maps in Six Masters. So if they're able to string stuff like that together and bring forward some consistency, well, then there's every chance they can start to compete with a lot of these other teams in this league. And I guess that sort of starts to make me question what's happened for Kanga here tonight, because it feels like we're seeing a fresher Kanga. Um, 
maybe as well as Sinister not playing the best as well, but I, I don't think we can really take away from how well Kanka played there. So is there anything that really caught your eye that maybe they weren't bringing to the table when they struggled a bit more earlier in the season? I saw a lot more team play, it looked like, on the, the hand of Kanga. I saw heaps of good refrags and trades, which was just not something that we saw. In fact, it was usually just a flurry of kills against them, and then it was a tough situation. But tonight, yeah, it was different. I felt like the team play was a lot tighter, and they weren't often overextending. I mean, in previous weeks, we saw Spruce often trying to really make some things happen. Like, I think he'd played Vigil a little bit on Cafe previously and tried to get a lot of runouts. But that just wasn't at all their game plan tonight, and I think it just worked so much better. Yeah, and I, I know you mentioned it earlier, but Novaix there for Kangar, he had a really impactful map. I mean, unfortunately, due to the rehost, of course, the, the kills don't exactly line up, but before the rehost, he went massive after it as well, and he was playing support character as well, so he's definitely someone to keep an eye out for. But it's time for Theme Park Sinister taking on Kangar. If the first map's anything to go by, this will be another banger, so hold on to your seats. This should be a great one. Let's jump into the fan phase, Raven. What are we expecting to be taken off the board here? Uh, again, I, uh, the real traditional band's going to be Thatcher, Ying, maybe another hard breacher. There's the Thatcher at least. Uh, but Theme Park being a pretty important map to be able to bring hard breaches on, you want to try and mess with that as much as possible. And there's a few different ways. Uh, directly is obviously banning a hard breacher. Indirectly is going to be that Thatcher ban. This is Kanga pulling out the Montane ban. So, I mean, they've seen that Fisho in particular has played quite a bit of Montane on Sinistar, and I believe that was on Theme Park against Wildcard. Indeed it was. I mean, on the last map, Fisho stuck to the more, let's just say, traditional operators, not saying anything too crazy on that last map, and it seemed to work out all right in the end. Mirab will be the second last ban followed up here by the Maestro. So again, quite a bit of intel denied here for the defenders, but it's not going to make life a whole lot easier with that Thatcher ban off the board, as we mentioned earlier. And Mira and Maestro were both the defense bans on Cafe as well. So we haven't been able to see either of those operators at all tonight. Uh, yes, Fisher Guy, uh, that's a great point that you brought up that he was playing more comfort ops or more traditional operators on Cafe. He actually, yeah, he had a big map for Sinistar. I'm pretty sure I saw he was on double digits as well. A couple of really instrumental rounds. These SAS shotgun operators, he has shown many a time he is very comfortable and proficient in playing. He's quite a dangerous man with that shotgun. Sinister electing to go to initiation and office first up here. Quite a spicy choice. I feel like initiation is a point that's basically contested for any objective, regardless of where that's the bomb, where the bomb site is. We often see a lot of defender utility placed in that area of the map to deny map control. Expect something similar again here, as of course Sinister have picked that site. The Omega combo has also made an appearance, Raven. Something we haven't uh, mentioned yet tonight. Uh, I believe you have trademarked that term. Or... We'll make At least in, in Look, I, don't, too. <laughs> I don't know whether I'd say I'm proud of it, but it works. <laughs> um, I'm happy with But that. yeah, look, Sinister, Sinister have been using that a lot. I mean, they use it a lot on Cafe, and now they're going to be using it a lot here. Seems like it worked out pretty well for them. Um, it catches so many projectiles. On top of that, Kanga were bringing a bit of Capital, so that's the great thing about Wamai, is that his magnets catch those arrows and redirect them. Yeah, I feel like maybe we should clarify that Wamega stands for Wamai and Jaeger, in case there was any doubt. Clear that up. Vinny and Miley playing those two operators. Well, as you mentioned, be looking to deny a lot of that enemy utility. And it looks like Kanga once again, maybe going for a bit of a off-meta push from the west here, potentially. I uh, see exactly what they try to do with that. I mean, they do have a free rotate there. If they manage to get control of Bunk, Daycare, Cafe, well, then they've got a direct rotate straight into the site. They don't have to use any utility, really, to utilize that. It's something that Sinister have set up for themselves. So that could be helpful, but it's just a matter of how cleanly and quickly they can actually take this control because they'll be able to utilize it. 
I mean, it's oh. not a simple take trying to take initiation there. If that pre fire came out, that would have been a pretty nuts kill. <laughs> Unlucky there for Novaix. Kanga taking their time here on the repels. Nico in a great position on the Echo. So maybe deny these entry points. Boats, meanwhile, he's over towards Cafe and Campo at the arcade's window. Oh, that smile again, the first pick. Maybe another one coming up here from Vinny, who will shoot a player in the back of the head. That's Boats. It's now up to Leb and Novax to try and bring this one back, but it's not looking great. No, it's definitely not, guys. It's uh, all up to Leb, in fact, and he's low HP. And they've basically just been walking straight into crossfires of Sinister here. And Leb is just absolutely surrounded. Sinister will close it out with a flawless round. Great way for them to be starting on Theme Park. We may well see another pretty heavy defender started map here, potentially. We have seen some regions where it hasn't been the case, but so far in ANZ, it seems to be trending that way, at least in the meantime. But even if Sinister have a good half here, we could well see Kanga bring it back in a similar fashion to their opponents when the switch of sides occurs. It's a long way away, though, as Sinister will now head to Armory and Throne Room on the first floor. Again, they will bring Wamega and expect an initiation room to again be hotly contested. It's interesting that Sinistar are only bringing one real true wall denial there with the, with the mute. Traditionally, you might see a Kaid or the Bandit trying to deny more of those walls. You can, of course, impact trick. But one thing about Theme Park with impact tricking is that the roofs are quite high. So it's not as simple as just throwing at the roof like you do on a map like Villa. You kind of have to bank it on, on a wall on some of these. So the maintenance one is a great example. You have to try and hit it on the side or above the door. Other than that, some of the other rooms, it's not as clean cut. So this might enable Kanga to get some of these walls open and actually get some pretty good direct pressure to site. Nico here on the Valk. Probably using some of those coconut bra angles. Of course, coconut bra is actually a part, I believe, of Team Sinister Orc, so I'm sure there's some exchanging of ideas going on there. So I expect to see some uh, spicy belt cam positions potentially here from Nico. They try and gain as much intel as they can. Of course, both Mira and Maestro were taken off the board, so that will impact the ability of these defenders to gain some of that crucial intel. I think definitely of the two, I mean, Maestro is probably the bigger impact of those because those evil eyes on site are so, so strong and his weaponry is great as well. I mean, that older is fantastic in so many circumstances. This C4 Ooh. is going to be big. That's Leb off the board. A strong player for Kanga and the Capital with a lot of great utility. Not going to have an effect. And that's in the first minute. So strong start there <laughs> from Sinister. That's going to pull out Kanga a little bit. Leb's body just been absolutely sent. As Kanga will now get control of control. <laughs> that, oh. oh, wow. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> well done to Spruce. Oh, it's going to be difficult to convert that. They did have really strong presence over towards the western side, even across from initiation. So Kanga will find this tough. And what I'm thinking, I mean, this is yet to be tested, but what I'm thinking Sinister have done there is they've reinforced that maintenance wall two different directions. I believe that makes it tougher to place the Thermite Charge in the middle of the wall, which is where it's protected from those impact tricks. So it forces you to choose one side to breach. I'm pretty sure that's what they've done here. We will have to wait and see. Novax is playing that Thermite as he will place the breach on the left side, opening it up to be impact tricked. It will be blown, and there we go. The trick comes out there from Sinister as he places it now on the right-hand side. Thinks better of it, and there could be a player flanking. Time is running out. Oh, that's smart. Sledge will open up a little crevice there for that exothermic charge to go into. and make it very difficult to trick, and it won't come off. We have five seconds now left on the board with the wall open. Yeah, they still don't have much other control than that, though. All they need to do is flush out that player behind Throne. I mean, they've got a chance to get the plant down, but they're still going to have to fight for picks. 
to protect the planter. With not much time to go, 30 seconds, and no way to get vertical on thrown side. It's definitely going to be tough for them. Oh, shots raining out there. Campo will be shut down, and our boats and Spruce are left to clutch it up. Spruce will need to try and make an entry as time is running out. And he does. He gets the first there with the SMG. Question is, can he find any more? It doesn't look like he will. Well, boats won't at least. He's shut down, and now Spruce is left in the one on three. Only a couple of seconds left, and Sinister can play this so, so passively. They do. It's the second round will be theirs. And well played from Sinister. They just held really tight positions, and that's all you need to do with Throne and Armory. I mean, you can contest a little bit early with the vertical play, just to slow down that clear and that push from the attackers. But then you just need to chill on site. I mean, once they get control of Throne, or even with that maintenance wall open, there's only so much they can do with that. They still have to run behind the throne to plant. And there's a lot of great positions as a defender that you can sit there. So I like the defense from Sinistar. Kanga are really struggling with these attacks on theme park. Bunk Daycare will be the third site of choice here for Sinistar. Of course, the previous two are still locked. Attackers need to locate and defuse After this round, of course, initiation and office will open up for them to go back to. As they try and cement their lead here, try and mount as much pressure as they can onto Kanga. But I mean, if it's anything like the last map, <laughs> defenders can definitely make a comeback, that's for sure. Yeah, it's entirely possible, and I believe that's actually what Sinister did in their match against Wildcard. They had a huge deficit to overcome after the first half on Theme Park back in week one, and they brought that back. It was so close to being an overtime match. Fortunate that it wasn't. So definitely well within the realm of possibility here. If Kanga just managed to get a couple of attacks, I think that puts them in a great spot to be able to do a lot with their defense half. The Omega combo once again will be activated here by Sinister. And as always, it will be Vinny and Milo playing those operators. Bit of a scary combo when they're both on their game. So far, it's been a little bit of a quieter week for Vinny, at least, than it was last week where he did win the MVP. I wouldn't say he's necessarily had a bad first map here, slash early second, but definitely a little bit quieter. Yeah, he definitely still had some impact on Cafe. I think it was just a bit more spread out this week in terms of how Sinister ended up bringing Cafe back and who was the one stepping up. Kanga, on the other hand, have had a lot of difficulties with these attacks, so no one has really been able to step up thus far. Of course, we're only two rounds in. They're trying to push in to take Cafe control here, which can be not easy. I mean, there's some great long angles to contest, and there's also the vertical play below, which there is a player actually playing in the bathroom but downstairs. Leb looks like he's now on the hunt for it's Vinny, Vinny actually on the stairs, not quite in the bathroom. But either way, this contest could happen quite soon. Vinny does have the default up. Doesn't spot Leb though. Leb in response will actually spot that camera. Throwing heads out to make sure there isn't a player on these yellow stairs. And Vinny has vacated back to the top. Drone taken down as well, so Lev will be forced to push that blind as Vinny blindly peeks that angle in towards Cafe. Does survive, isn't taken out quite yet. Might be able to provide some additional intel as frags now to start to come out. Fisher guy with the C4 gets a big kill there onto Lev, who was again below as the Diffuser is now recovered by Kanga. More utility sent out here. It is captured though by a magnet. That flash goes out and will make boats white. No vapes though, will cover getting Milo. And now it's a three on three. They're just staying in touch so far, Kanga, but they don't have a whole lot of tangible control here. They have around Arcade and Cafe, but that's about it. Sinister sitting in some comfy positions on site. There's two of them there in Bunk and one in Daycare. They can just hold out time. Kanga are going to have to flush into positions. Fisher is going to get aggressive there. He gets one or two Novaics. That's a strong pick because that's the diffuser down and a hot player for Kanga. This is looking better for Sinister now. Boats and Campo left to clutch up. Diffuser drops, not looking great for them, but a player will sweep wide west. Nico needs to try and refrag it, will eventually. That could have almost ended badly. And now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Boats with full HP. 
no Thanks diffuser in hand. He's going to go for the frag. The flash comes out, but Nico shuts him down again, clutching up big here. Four teams sinister, and that will be three straight. Oh, how did he? How did he dodge that flash? Oh my! <laughs> wow, wait. Great pre-fire though. I mean, if he hadn't pre-fired that, he was low HP. I was totally backing Kang to be able to get that round. So really well played from Nico. And we have seen so many 1v1s in this series so far. I didn't actually keep full track of it in that first map, but there was definitely a huge chunk of 1v1s. These rounds have been quite tight. Kang is still struggling though to find something here on attack in theme park. That was their best round so far. So maybe they're starting to gather a bit of momentum and get a good gauge on exactly how Sinister is playing the map out. Well, the Nook has been activated there by Spruce on the 6 pick. Attackers need to locate and I believe it was Alifo that tried out the Nook here on Theme Park a bit earlier in the season. Paid off to a certain extent. So it'll be interesting to see how Spruce can incorporate it into Kanga's game. Probably expecting him to maybe go for some sort of late flank arcade, because that's often the side of the map that's a little bit neglected by the defense. But uh, in saying that, Sinister are investing quite a bit of utility on that side of the map. Ten seconds to insertion. Look, last time that Kanga tried to push this, it actually ended up being a flawless round in favor of Sinister, so they're going to have to really change things up. But Nico out there on 5 and 0. In fact, he hasn't died yet. The Sinister. He's having a good map so far. And reminds you, this is Kanga's pick. And this is kind of how Cafe started in the opposite direction, right? It was Sinister's pick. But Kanga were the ones that shot out to a strong 4 0 lead. Kanga now looking to gather some control. Dronian's heading out in towards Cash. There's been some prep done by Sinister to slow down this push. Spruce, interestingly enough, is shoulder to shoulder here with both and Campo. It's going to be very interesting to see how he uses his ability, maybe as an entry, which could be quite intriguing. I don't think that was really too effective at the start here, as he pings out the top of that little wall being broken out. Perfect for projectiles to go through, and Kanga will actually use that to send out some flashes and burn some more utility. Spruce will follow it up with a grenade here. I don't think it will find a pick, but Sinister now might feel a little bit uneasy. Yeah, just just put a little bit of pressure. They have to think about things like that grenade and projectiles. But they can sit comfortably and hold these angles as... Kanga don't have any pressure coming from the bunk side. Hold and hold until Kanga are ready to push through. There's three of them stacked up around control. The other two there, top of Dragon Stairs. It's so half the round and they have really just haven't achieved a whole lot besides flushing out a little bit of utility. Things not looking great here for Kanga. Spruce not really making full use of his gadget thus far. More flashes will rain out. I believe maybe the shield taken down, not too able to tell quite yet. It may still be standing, it is. C4 comes out there, Pomp Fisher over that said shield and won't find a target. Habana pallets will be going off on that control wall to try and deny Derpe's position. It will force him off temporarily, Smoke Rain to follow up, but no one's really that close. Talk about close range though, this could be big with the shotgun. Derpe is taken down though. A couple of big kills there for Kanga. Give themselves a chance in this round. And now it's a two on four. Fisher guy and Moloska need to try and clutch it up. Now it's just Milo on the Jaeger. He's all the way over at Yellow Stairs going in for a massive flank here. Head checking all of these angles and Kanga will, in the meantime, get that plant down. Sinister, let this round slip away and I mean, Milo's good, but I'm not sure he's this good. He finds one. Needs to find three more. And that time is now ticking down. Keep in mind, he needs seven seconds to counter Diffuse. So he really doesn't have much to work with here as he makes his way now in towards Waiting Room. There is a player to his left that he doesn't spot. Will eventually be shut down and Kanga will get their first round here on Theme Park.
Yeah, what a great attack from Kango. As we said, they got flawless on that attack attempt last time. And this time, wow, it was so much better. Just some beautiful frags coming in through towards initiation. Pinching Sinister out perfectly. That was almost like night and day how that worked out for them. So if they can continue this as they repeat through these bomb sites, oh, Sinister could be in for a hard contest because like I said, if Kanga managed to get maybe even just two attacks under their belt, if they get a 3-3 half, it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on Sinister's attack. I mean, I'm not even sure went wrong, what went wrong there for Sinister. Maybe a little bit of an overextension on their peaks. It's a little bit hard to tell, but when Kanga exploded there, they were winning those ones and... Before you knew it, Milo is left all alone in that 1v4, an unwinnable position. I mean, probably Sinister's real first fault here on Theme Park. And to be honest, probably expect them to at least lose one round here on the defense. So they'll be looking to try and win the next two. Give themselves a really nice opportunity to get full points this evening. Ten seconds remaining. Which is totally what they would have been expecting of themselves. Five seconds so, as long as they hold a lead here, I think they're going to be feeling alright. But as soon as Kanga starts to really resist, I mean, if Kanga do get this back to be a 3-3 half, it's really going to be compounding some pressure on the Sinister. It's going to be making the second half all the more exciting for us. Spruce is persisting with this Nook pick as well. I mean, I don't know whether it really worked out for the reasons you would pick Nook in that previous round. Maybe just continuing to try and build surprise and that unknown for Sinister. I mean, in the last round, the FMJ did net him a kill, but it wasn't necessarily his ability that had an impact on the round. Maybe we'll see something different here. Keep in mind that Sinister do have up on the board for you. Trying to gather intel. Spruce is getting lit up. <laughs> Almost thought he would be taken down, but skates away with full HP and... We'll retreat back outside to this cafe terrace. The Spruce almost had an impact in that round trying to sneak up, but it wasn't quite meant to be. Yeah, I mean, he picked off that player as they peaked cafe. That could have been huge. In fact, he's going to be the one that goes down, though. So now they know he's off the board. That eases a lot of that nook pressure. Unknown of where exactly she is creeping around on the map. Speaking of though, Kangaroo started to put some presence close to site. Now Vax is in maintenance, ready to try and open that wall. Derpe there to impact trick it yet again. So if that is successful this time, that's going to change things dramatically. Minute 30 now left on the board. Dragon control has been given has been to Kangaroo, gained by Kangaroo. They maybe try and find a pick on towards site, but Sinister with that man advantage. Not too keen to peek back. Really no incentive for them to at this stage in the round. It's all up to Kanga to try and make that first move. And while there were only two on site, there might have even been a chance if Kanga wanted to just up the aggression a little bit. But now being more rotating back to site, Milo is still wreaking havoc off site. That's the uh, aggressive player of Kanga of Campo taken out now. So with two man disadvantage coming into this final moment. It's really going to be tough for Kanga to be able to bring this one back on Throne and Armory. Sinister just playing it so, so patiently. Leb is fired at by a, a Sinister member, rather, on that western side of the objective as Milo is now flanking Yellow Stairs. This could spell the end of this attack. I don't think that player spotted him. That's Leb being lit up now as Fisher Guy gets another for his team. And it's looking like it will be 4 1 in favor. Of Team Sinister, surely it will as Leb is traded out and now Novakes. The newest member of this roster is left in a one on four. Ten seconds left on the board. He pre fires one. Uh, there's nothing he can do at this stage. This is just stat padding at its finest and he will be taken down. A player picking through that bomb chassis will end his life. And Sinister will return to form. Yep, that's a pretty good looking Throne Armory. That means that they are looking at worst a 4 2 half at best a 5 1. If I'm Kanga, I would be stoked with a 4 2 uh, attack half, to be honest. What I'm concerned about, though, guys, is this was Kanga's pick. 
And right now they are struggling. I'm wondering exactly what they were seeing there. Maybe this is a map that they have been working on a lot of. Or maybe it's purely just that they saw that Sinister haven't played this map much and that they didn't beat Wildcard so that they might have had some kind of edge there. I mean, it's definitely been a night. Oh, interesting pick so far. I mean, Cafe earlier this evening was interesting when Sinister went there. Defended I mean, hopefully something we can uh, pick at later at the interviews, but you're right, it's definitely thrown a spanner in the works as to where these teams have decided to go. Either way, it's produced some interesting results so far, or at least some close ones. And the Sinister try and assert their dominance in this first half. It's definitely not over. When Kanga goes to that defense. I mean, we could definitely see them bring it back. I'm not putting them I'm not putting that rather out of the realm of possibility. I mean <laughs> we almost saw a sinister choke it there on map one, so. Again, anything is possible. The thing is, Bunk Take Care was the one that Nico got the 1v1 clutch on, which looked like a pretty good round for Kanga. So we'll see if they can replicate some parts of that at least to try and make this round more successful. And so far, I really don't feel like these bands have had a major impact uh, on at least Kanga's attacks or since the defenses. I mean, the Thatcher does have some kind of impact, right? Because you can't just simply use these EMPs to clear utility. But on the other hand, Thatcher is banned so often these days. Really, as a team, like you should be ready on how to have other solutions. Novex with the diffuser in hand, trying to maybe find some early map control over towards Cafe. Looks like it's a split approach from Kanga so far. A couple of members on either side trying to pinch in towards the objective. And you've got Lev and Camper on one side and Boats and Spruce on the other. Definitely setting up to be some sort of an interesting take. Much of Kanga droning at the moment as well, so expect them to have a lot of intel here on Sinister. Uh, aggressive push up from Spruce as well, Arcade Stairs. Very strong map control considering that is site that he's looking at there in daycare. So common rotate from the defenses in and out through that door towards Top Arcade to help contest with Cafe. What he might not be ready for though is the fact that Milo is still holding his position below in blue. And there's a player right in that hallway, <laughs> Leb, he's just going to oh, be no. completely unaware of Milo. Not even looking in the remote direction of him. So not great there from Kanga, but there is still some pretty good map control here obtained. Yeah, look, I may have cursed the droning a little bit here as Kanga are just falling like flies. C4 comes down. That could be another. Oh, Boats manages to shoot it, though, as Milo gets another. It is looking like this will go in favor of Sinister. If they win the round, that's a 5-1 half. Send themselves up so nicely to take full points this evening, but Milo is shut down on the flank. Giving Kanga a bit of a sniff here, maybe. Boats has a diffuser, trying to make an entry in towards a daycare. Can't quite find that opening yet. As Nico is holding this bunk door again, we are seeing Ala on the board. That Scorpion, so dangerous at close range. Sinister electing not to have a rotate here on the break room wall. Potentially protecting Kanga a little bit, but with only 20 seconds left, Spruce on a slither of HP, surely. They won't be able to win this round. The entry does come through. Boats will need to go for a plan, and he does. Spruce, with that one HP, will need to try and cover the plant, which may well be stuck. Surely not. It is, actually, in the end, and Sinister now need to retake. Surely a winnable position here for their team. But time is running down. Sinister needs to get aggressive and try and find these picks, and there we go. That's the first, and now Boats needs to hold on for a one versus three. Surely this isn't possible. And there we go. Sinister will overwhelm him. Nico gets the pick and it will be 5-1 in their favor. Coming out of the first half. Ended up being a really nice, calm retake there from Sinister. I was quite surprised that they let the plant down go so easily, but I also really like that they just never rushed to it. I mean, they seemed aware the plant was going down but sometimes you see teams make the mistake where they're like, oh, he's planning, he's planning. Oh, I've got to run and deny. 
and then you actually end up in 1v1 gunfights. And that could have worked out really poorly since they made it calm. You saw them rotate around in their positions through waiting room, and it was just a really great pinch for that retake. So well done from them to hold a 5-1 defense half. Pretty strong position to be in. Does put a lot of pressure back on the Kanga. Well, it's not the first time this evening we've seen a 5-1 half in favor of the defense. Of course, it was Kanga that had that lead on Cafe. And they did end up losing in the end. So, I mean, it's definitely a window of opportunity for Kanga to bring this one back. I don't know if it's necessarily the most likely outcome in this matchup, but I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, time will tell. We'll see how they go with this first defense. Might be a great indicator for whether it is a possibility or not. And yeah, that's the third 5-1 half that we've seen so far. Both halves in the first map were 5-1. That seems to be the trend. And Nico, speaking of one, he's 8-1. and one. And he only died once, of course, on that first half. So great performance from him so far for Sinister on Theme Park. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Nico definitely showing up not only this evening, but over the course of Six Masters as a whole, he's been playing quite well. It often feels like he's left in a lot of these clutch scenarios. There are many occasions tonight on Cafe where he's left in 1vx's and often performing quite well for his team when they need him most. Kangaroo on the other hand having some issues during that attack. Looking to correct that now on the defense. Both Campo and Leb on a very interesting roam as Sinister will approach from the eastern side of the map. Probably going to end up being a lot of utility expended over towards initiation as they try and gain control. Yeah, definitely looking for that vertical clear, take that vertical control, which is going to be big pressure on Nico, the man of the hour. To open a lot of holes there in office. There's a lot of pressure on the players hanging out around Armory, and right now that's really only boats from what I can see from Kanga, and he's freely rotating through sight. Leb and Novaix, though, they're putting some pressure in from the west side there, south side bunk daycare. Something that Sinister will have to be careful of because if that sneaks up on them, it could be really detrimental. And Vinny getting a little aggressive by himself is taken down. Not 100% sure of that angle. It means that even with the revive, he's going to be on 20 HP. Kanga now trying to rotate back towards side, and I don't think Sinister were in the best position to maybe cut that off. So I need to be mindful of that later in the round. And at 15 on the board, Nico gets to work now from above using that sledgehammer. It looks like Kanga quite content playing on site, at least in the in the meantime. A couple of shots rain out. Oh, Nico. Almost finding one. The C4 will end his life though in the end. And it will be a four on five. He opened some pretty important holes though, so somewhat of his job has been done, all the damage has been dealt. Let's see whether it does come back to affect Sinister, but they haven't given themselves a whole lot of time here. They haven't really opened any walls. It's finally up to Milo and Derpe to do so. But Kanga has some strong positions on site. Novaix gets another big pick onto Vinny. He's finally finished off. It's going to make it a little tough here for Sinister in this final 30 seconds. Well, Oscar aware that a player might be above, he is correct, but can't find the pick, and as time depletes, their chances of winning this round go with it. Looks like they may well just be sending it into sight, try and find some refrags, but Spruce on the Echo will deny that, and look at that. The kill feed will light up, and Kanga end up on top. Well played by Kanga in the end, and pretty, <laughs> pretty good way to start off the half. Yep, did look good. So... Maybe comeback potential is there. I mean, in terms of the way the map is playing out and the way these teams have been playing, a 5-1 comeback on defense wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility. And yeah, that form looked pretty good. So we'll see whether they can continue it, bring some consistency. They're going to be on bunk daycare now, which means they get to explore the whole second floor. I think too dramatic with their lineup either. They're bringing in a Goyo, which is going to be really helpful to deny some of that hallway control, maybe even top arcade. Could do some interesting Goyo shields around there. 
defenders. Protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. As well as that, Kanga will be bringing the Omega combo. So, a lot of utility will need to be expended to clear those Goyo shields and anything else that Kanga place in and around the objective. Like a pretty similar setup to Sinister, quite default so far. Sinister should be well and truly aware of that and have a plan to try and defeat Kanga here and try and put themselves on that match point. Again, just not wanting this match to drag out longer than it needs to. Like they've elected to go shield heavy on the east side, in fact, so deny control take in towards initiation, deny the bathroom cash take into office, which looks like exactly how Sinister is going to push, so that's a good read from Kanga. And it's a matter of whether Sinister see this and they decide this is going to be way too hard for us to push through, let's rotate, or whether they will actually hard push it. Was 5 2 the scoreline as Sinister again are looking to try and close this one out. Going to be challenging though. So far, this map has been heavily defender sided, and that trend, if it continues, will only tighten the scoreline. Decent entries from Sinister so far, but no real meaningful control gathered near the objective. Closest defender will be Campo. Inside of bathroom, Derpe drains that out and will force that bandit back at least temporarily. One drone's taken out, Milo fuzz it up though quickly with another. And then he might be able to shut him down as he tries to cross back towards site. Campo is taken low, but will get away with his life. There's definitely some good advancement here from Sinistar. Campo is just... Playing with fire, he's kind of stuck in that corner now based on the way that Sinister are reholding this. He's trying to peek out and just get that opening. If he somehow manages to get the first pick from these engagements, definitely going to spell trouble for Sinister. Oh, Nico almost finds one there in towards office. As some bullet holes will now be created by Campo. Sinister being stalled out here at the moment. It's not looking great. It's only a minute to go. Looks like there's still plenty of utility that needs to be cleared and picks that need to be found. But they are really struggling. They are, and they're not giving themselves much time either. I think that's the real critical thing here. Even if they do manage to get control of this east side, there's nothing that really facilitates them being able to have a solid execute onto site. They do have a rotate available, but the positioning is still there for Kanga. Oh, Vinny finds one there. That's no bags off the board. So that's the opening pick that they really needed to try and initiate this execute. As Fisho now at the initiation wall tries to find another, dodges the C4. 20 seconds left. Many more players that need to be cleared, but Nico will find one. Vinny as well, but Fisher guy has been shut down. The refrag comes out quickly though. That's Vinny with his triple. He himself will be taken down, but another retrade from Sinister will secure them the round. Their first attack in the half. And now they are on match point. But great round from Sinister. Really good attack. Vinny pretty instrumental in that one, getting some solid picks. Yeah, that is Sinister on match point. They're up 6-2 now, so a lot of pressure creeping back towards Kanga. No mistakes allowed now. They have to force this to overtime, and that means they have to get four rounds consecutively. Initiation and office will be selected here by Kanga. Bringing an identical lineup to the previous round. Feels like it's starting to slip away a little bit here for Kanga. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. But uh, on a map like this, I don't think you can confidently say that they have the map Team Sinister until they actually get those seven rounds on the board. Yeah, and given like a lot of that round, that previous round on the bunk daycare attack, 
actually wasn't that bad for Kango on defense. They ended up just losing those gunfights really deep into that round. They can hold hold themselves a bit better. Maybe the round will turn out differently. Throne Armory, for example, was a great defense for them. They can continue to replicate some of their successes. It's still possible, but it's four rounds in a row, which is going to be quite tough. Spruce maybe looking for some sort of spawn peak or trying to find maybe any drones. Doesn't really do either. A little re barricade up cafe. Probably some of the most aggressive drone hunting I've seen in quite some time. <laughs> Spruce unable to find his target though and better make himself useful elsewhere. I mean across the board it's looking a little bit aggressive early round here from Kanga. Maybe Trying to stop Sinister from getting any sort of control in these first couple minutes. I think it's always good to try an early contest. It's not like you're being overly aggressive and trying to get the pick. It's more so just about holding that space, shooting the drone, and delaying time. That being said, though, that player in Throne almost got himself cornered. I mean, Fisher has decided not to hold the doorway. Milo gets the player trying to come help him. That's Campo that's been taken off. Leb is essentially stuck here. Bruce has come to back him up, but this push from Sinistar so far is looking quite successful. Ooh, I'm not sure those players are aware of Leb's position. Fortunately for them, they seem to fall off. Vinny maybe being quite cautious. Oh, Vinny. Oh. Fisher rather actually is holding that exit. Doesn't find the pick though. It is still a 5 on 4 in favour of Sinister. Both Spruce and Leb now need to try and find their way back towards site. As they head over towards Arcade to rejoin the rest of the team. Sinister, meanwhile, we see pretty good control here on the eastern side. This is where they're really going to start to stall out if they don't have any kind of control in the west. Because they don't have the Thatcher to really simply deal with the wall denial of these walls. As well as the fact that Novaix is holding a strong position with the shield in initiation towards control. So they can't just walk up the site. It's a lot to deal with to flush that out. They're going to have to blow up the shield for one. And this one, why can throw out these magnets from his pocket to continuously deny this utility. Oh, a couple of shots rain out. Novax will survive with that shield. So many flashbangs being used to try and clear some of these magnets and ADS devices. Shield finally popped there. Of course, it was a Goro shield, so that will stall out time for a little bit. And time, quite a precious commodity. Only 40 seconds left. Then this the need to try and get a move on. They've got some better positioning here, but still, it's going to be a very small amount of time available to try and push the site here. There's some long angles available for Sinister to use, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a bit of a cluster rush in, and they're going to have to try and get some pretty big picks. The rush will come, and it is shut down, but Milo refrags it. I think he's stuck on the wall there, and Milo can't enter. Is taken down. A couple more frags will come out there from Sinister, and Levin Boat to left in a two on a three. Very winnable here on the defense if Sinister can't get in, but Nico gets one. They only need to find one more, and they do. Team Sinister manage to close out Theme Park. A little bit cleaner than map number one this evening, and they will go home with six points. Well, they ended up getting the points that you'd say they expected, but probably not fully in the fashion that they expected. Map two, much more how we were all expecting. Star 7-2. Yep, very good performance from them in the end. Milo and Nico being the two and double digits for their team. Overall, I mean, Kanga looked better this week, but Sinister still managed to bring it home. That last map definitely coming to more of an abrupt end <laughs> than Cafe. It always felt like out of nowhere, Sinister managed to win that round and take the map. And Look, it was definitely a great turnaround from what was a pretty disastrous map one for the most part. So I think they'll be pretty happy with how they ended up. And I mean, at the end of the day, six points on the board six points is six points yeah as long as they got those points uh they can go back they can watch their match back they can figure out what was going wrong on cafe and i mean standings wise the pressure is off in terms of losing a map tonight so they've managed to get that and that's yeah the most important thing and i mean uh, let's talk about the team kanga camp i mean they're still yet now <laughs> to win a map in this season they came so close the closest they've ever been uh, so far but it did feel like they had, you know, a bit of a refreshment to the team. Novaix came in, played quite well. The rest of his team stood up as well for the most part. So it's not all doom and gloom in the Kanga camp.
Yeah, I think they just have to take the positives they can. And tonight was their best map so far in Six Masters. Even on Theme Park, I mean, it's not like they got terribly trounced by Sinister. Some of those rounds looked pretty good. I mean, that last round also was totally winnable. It just came down to the, the final moments Sinister did manage to run over the top and get the picks needed. But it was a much better performance from Kanga than we've seen from them in quite a few weeks. And I mean, looking ahead now, Sinister, they'll be taking on Alifo, so they don't have it any easier for the rest of this season. Let's not get this wrong, despite versing um, a lower-seeded team or the lower-seeded team heading into this because Alifo qualified through those open quals. You might think, oh yeah, it'd be an easier 2-0 than Kanga. But I mean, Alifo have been the one team that have upset the party so far this season. So Sinister really need to work hard to try and iron out some of those issues they had this evening. Absolutely. LFO is not a team to underestimate. They've proven it week in, week out. They've managed to secure maps against the top teams. So since they really need to tidy up things that were happening on that first map, because that was really, it could have gone in the hands of Kango. And we could have been facing a very different situation. Well, we have our first interview of the night ready and waiting. It will be the epic gamer himself, Nico from Sinister. Hello, gamers. G'day, Nico. The draw line's looking as fantastic as always. Ah, How are you feeling? <laughs> um, I'm feeling pretty good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. How was is, how is map one? Let's talk about that because obviously map two was a bit more straightforward. Cafe, not quite going away uh, for Damn. the most part. How would you guys crawl back? You really got to hit me with the tough questions. Uh, um, no, it was, <laughs> it was definitely the, the initial beginning that we... Everyone saw it. The roller coaster of emotions on the... Uh, I don't know. It was a rough beginning, but obviously, like a lot of the rounds were close. But we know exactly what the like what we did wrong. Um, so yeah, we we fixed our mistakes on theme. Kind of, there were still a lot of mistakes. Like, tank came down to the wire on a lot of rounds, but we I don't know pulled it off in the end. Um, theme park was obviously Kanga's pick. Was that a surprise for you guys? Were you expecting to be playing theme parks tonight, or we we did warm up on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay well that's but, good <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's it we warmed up we know we knew what we were doing um and with cafe uh you already highlighted like at the the start of that map things that just weren't going well for you guys um was there something like when you chose the map was there something in particular that you were trying to focus on against kango not really we kind of we realized that a lot of like you know, I don't want to BM or anything here, but like with the play style of like, just do a lot of, th like we aren't prepared for a lot of the things that they did, for example. Um, but it's not like the structure that we're, I wouldn't say used to, but we, it dismantles our attempt of a structure pretty, pretty easily. So we definitely got caught off guard by a lot of players. Awesome, well you guys will be taking on LFO in your next play day. How are you expecting that one to play out? Because LFO have had a pretty strong season so far. Yeah, they're going off pretty strong, but we're hoping to continue the second map momentum right through. We we won't be, you know, dropping our expectations or raising our expectations. We're just going to keep doing what we're doing. Awesome. Well, Nico, congrats on tonight. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Have a good night. Definitely was a uh, roller coaster of emotions on that first map. I think you described it pretty well. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was for them because, uh, like, that, they would have been coming into this expecting totally two map wins. I, I think that's fair to say as well. I wouldn't say that that would be BM or underestimating Kanga totally. Based on the way Kanga been playing and the way Sinister has been playing, that was expectation of a lot of people. So when they were up against that 4-0 deficit in that the start of map one. Uh, that would have been massive pressure for them. So credit to Sinister to be able to bring it back, turn it around, and actually not lose the map in the end. Well, I mean, we've already talked about who Sinister are taking on um, in their next play day. Let's focus in now on Kanga, who, again, still yet to win a map. They were taking on Ferox. Again, it's it's looking tough. Like I can't really picture a scenario where you can go into a matchup and say, oh, Kanga will probably take a map, because so far they just haven't quite produced the goods. But, I mean, tonight started to show that maybe things are starting to come along. Definitely looked better for them. And as I was saying in pre-show, with a team like Kanga, where there's very much no expectation against what they're going to do, they're always going to have that surprise factor. I mean, Sinister weren't playing that great, but Kanga were actually playing pretty good Siege in that first map. 
So there's every chance that they could bring out a surprise there and it could be just enough to secure a map. So a, a team is never safe. Well, we have the man himself waiting on the line. It is Spruce the Moose from Kanga. How are we, boys? Good day, Spruce. Again, a little bit of a rough night for you boys tonight, but I mean, Cafe, let's talk about that. 8-6, eight, 8-7, eight, eight, sorry. A close one in there. Yeah, I played like poo, but yeah, the boys carried me, so that was that was nice. Uh, uh, shout out to Novax, really good on his debut. Um, proud of him. Uh, yeah, we just kind of faltered off at the end, stopped uh, doing our defaults, and kind of hurt us, really. Yeah, I want to touch on Novaix. I mean, maybe just tell us a little bit more about you guys bringing him in, the decision there, and the role that he now plays. Um, so he's basically our hard support. Um, he's kind of helping out with the late round IGLing. Uh, so that's something which we really lacked. We, we're pretty good at taking ground, um, but using the ground to get anything done, <laughs> um, we lack. So yeah, he's really helped with that. Um, so yeah, shout out to Novak. He's, he's been he frogged really well on Cafe as well. No one really frogged one thing, mm. but we won't talk about them. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was pretty nuts on Cafe. And uh, seeing as you brought up theme, I mean that was the map pick for you guys. Uh, maybe tell us what, what went wrong on theme. Why did it all go so bad? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I've, we're attacking on theme. I mean, it's, I, in our region, it seems to be pretty defensive side. In other regions, it's kind of been a bit more even, but. Yeah, we. I'm not too sure like what went wrong. Our comms kind of maybe ran out of gas. I'm not too sure. Just just started faltering on the teamwork. I expect getting into our heads about it all. So uh, yeah, it was just disappointing theme. Well, in your next play day, you guys will be taking on your old team, Team Ferox. What are your goals? What are you trying to get out of that match? Uh, I just want to beat that snake sushi. Um, <laughs> all right. Apart from that, <laughs> yeah, not much else. <laughs> all right we'll leave it at that spruce again we appreciate your time we'll talk soon man see you later have a good one see you later <laughs> boys uh he never fails to disappoint there's always something he says in every interview isn't there yeah we've had some pretty good banter in interviews in six masters it's uh setting some good storylines for these uh matchups um look i think uh he brought up a great point about theme park it did look like their team work was really starting to fade away which was something that was working so well for them on Cafe. Uh, I think that's not totally unnatural considering their circumstances. Um, but if they can build consistency from the way they played on Cafe, they can start to string together some good performances and maybe start to win a map. I mean, it's really interesting. I know Spruce being Spruce saying that he just wants to win, but what do you think is realistically Kanga's goal heading into these final matchups of the season? Are they actually looking to take maps or is it more so trying to team build and try and work into future tournaments? I think the focus really has to be just building themselves as a team and getting ready for future competitions. Uh, of course, you're going to try and win the maps because that's what you want to do. And they could have a hand in a team missing out on playoffs. And I mean, to an extent, you can have some satisfaction from that if you want to. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the main focus is definitely going to be their performances, getting those to be better and more consistent. Well, that is the first series of the night done and dusted. Sinister will take it to O. But on the other side of the break, we will have Elevate taking on the Pittsburgh Knights. We'll see you soon.
Change your heart.